Okay, so the meeting is recording. It's 7.06. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order. Great. Uh, I probably should have asked this before, but Alex, is, uh, is anyone else from your team joining or are you, is there anybody we're waiting on? No, it'll be just me. Okay, great. Um, Right. Uh, with that, we'll start with uh, old business, uh, 4151 Morris Avenue, uh, AKA the Wells Fargo um, application. Um, this was something which had been presented to us before, but um, we wound up um, asking the planning board to take a look at it. And I see Matt's on the line. So uh, just a quick question to Matt. Um, am I correct that everything has been addressed to the planning board satisfaction? Substantially. We'll, we'll have another meeting with them tomorrow. They had reduced the foot candles just because it's such a dark site. Um, and then we need to look at the property line. Um, it seems like the, I'm not sure where the property line is coming from on the drawings, but, um, we'll get that straightened out before we sign off. I, it looks like the property line, even the property owner, uh, Alex Sarukas, says that it's right up against the northern edge of the building. Okay, you're talking about the, um, the property line between um, Food Town and- The, the main course, Louis, yeah. Course. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, it'll, it, and it's not part of the project anyway. Um, right. There are some lights there that we ask them to leave there only because obviously this is an ATM safety. So even if those aren't their parking spaces, you know, it's not great to have a dark, you know, side of a building when you're coming out of an ATM. Right. So they've agreed to leave those lights there, but to lower the foot candles. So we're trying to get down towards the state mandated minimum, which is two foot, one foot candle out to 60 feet um, because the rest of the site is just so dark. It has no lights. As you know, and with the comp plan saying, you know, we want to maintain, you know, retain the nighttime character of the village. And obviously we're trying to be sensitive to that as well. So, um, but obviously you understand this is mandated and has to happen because it's part of state code. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yep, yep, I no appreciate problem. it, Matt. Um, no so with that, I'll turn it over to Alex. If you can uh, update us on how uh, you know, the application has changed from the last time that we saw it. Yeah. And Alex, you, um, you're able to, if you have them, you can share the documents that you submitted. You can screen share, or I can open them if you don't have them on your machine. Well, I should be able to screen share. So I'm about to do it right now. So let me know if you cannot see this. <clears throat> I can see it. Okay. And just so... The property line in question is this one right here, Matt. And I agree, we can get our drawings updated for it to be on this building. This is just taken from Landgrid when we originally had, so we can update this property line. <clears throat> so we've had a couple of meetings with the planning board since the first historic review, and I would say our plans have changed substantially. Uh, the first design we offered wasn't really our deal because of the restrictions we were given by the landlord. So we were mounting pole heads on top of the building, above the building to shine out. The landlord now let us have a pole, which allowed us to have minimal lighting on the front facade of the building. So what we're able to do, and I can show you where all these lights are, is we have a pole light here. We're going to add two fixtures to the facade of the building. <clears throat> Underneath this canopy, we are replacing or removing can lights. We're re removing can lights to reduce the foot candles underneath the canopy because we have these two wall lights that were also shining underneath. So they created a really bright area in front of this lobby entry that was not needed. <clears throat> Over here is a side of the building that's the parking that Matt was talking about. We left two wall lights here just so we can cover this parking area. And at the very back of this building, it's almost like a uh, enclosure that they have a light that we just replacing with an LED fixture. So all the fixtures that we're proposing are full cut off LED and anything that we're removing are not gonna be full cut off 45 degree angle or flood fixture. So everything that we're coming back with is going to improve the overall glare and or light trespass of the, of the project. 
So I can show you kind of what it looks like on the building real quick, and then we can go into more details afterwards. So this is just showing where the pole light's going to be. It's going to be at this parking space. Uh, I sent over a pole based detail. We can look at that also if you guys want to later. This is kind of showing right here. We're replacing four existing can fixtures here. This one's kind of pointing. I didn't have a picture of the last can, but there's one more can just further down right here. This is the wall light that we were replacing with a full cutoff fixture at the back of the building. These are the two wall lights in front of the building entry that we are coming back with a full, full, full cutoff LED fixture. These are gonna be two more wall lights that we're adding at the parking just for general security purposes. And there's two right here on the later slide, these are getting removed. So it's not gonna be four wall lights, these are gonna be gone. This is right. one more wall, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I guess the, the question is, I see a light fixture in the upper or left-hand corner. Yep. Is that the light fixture that you're proposing? Yes, sorry, that is correct. This is the fixture that we are proposing. So all um, these fixtures are going to be kind of more security-based, performance-based than, I would say, decorative. How is that mounted on the wall? So it is mounted, if you're looking at this fixture, it is mounted to the wall at the back. This is the front, and the light comes from the bottom and shines down. Whereas the two that are on that side are shining at you said 45 degrees. Correct. So if this was kind of like this fixture, the light source would be this very front area, but it's actually on the bot underneath the fixture, shining down and out. So you're actually providing more light to the passageway and less light spilling um, into the towards the main course building. Correct. Correct. Any more questions about this slide? This is just the exact same wall light. We are coming over here and just adding one to the edge of the building. This is showing the two wall lights that are adding to the front facade. And I can tell you why we're adding these when I go to the compliance areas, but there's a 60 foot and 50 foot radius around this ATM lobby entry that we have to have light levels at. This is just showing we're removing this existing floodlight so that will no longer be there. This is all the canopy fixtures that we're removing and patching. So all these can lights won't be there because there are two wall lights that provide enough light underneath this canopy. These are the two wall lights we're removing and patching on the side of the building near the parking spaces. And then these are two decorative fixtures we're removing and we're keeping this one that we're replacing with a full cutoff fixture. And this is just showing anything that is yellow, we're not touching and it's out of our scope. So that's just the more decorative linear fixtures. That's the front signage on all the building. On, on the underside of the canopy, the ones that you're removing, are they only in front of Wells Fargo or do they go in front of the other tenants too? So it should be, let's see, I got a good, good picture of it in front of the building. So it's going to stop right here is the last one that we're removing. And I just want to say we have landlord approval for this area. So even though it's not Wells Fargo's space, we have approval from the landlord to change out these lights. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When you say change out the lights, you're talking about the uh, soffit lights. Correct. And there's two here that we're adding to wall packs to not technically Wells Fargo space right here. But those are then approved by the landlord. All right. All right. Now you're adding to their Correct. Are they the fixture that is uh, in the upper left-hand corner? Yes, sir. All right. Well, if that's the case, why are you adding it on the, um, the facade? Yeah, I can explain why. Okay. So these down here is New York requires a certain amount of foot candles at certain radiuses of the ATM. So the main reason for these lights on the facade over here is to reach this 50 foot radius and 60 foot radius. So if we were gonna put them underneath the canopy and put them on the wall, it wouldn't shine enough light out into these radiuses and we'd be failing. So we have to use the height and the length of that facade to reach out into what we need. 
Okay, and, and those um, foot candle, le th this layout showing the foot candles uh, incorporates all of the light fixtures that are currently there? Correct, Except anything in this compliance area, it incorporates it into there. Okay, uh, how about the, uh, the pole, the lights on the pole? So th yes, this pole is, this is everything that we're proposing. So this is in showing the light levels coming from this pole. What's the minimum you're required to have again? So for this area, the minimum that we need. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, this two for this area, for the 50 foot radius. What was that minimum? Sorry. Oh, I see it down there. Two, two foot candles. And what's going to happen is it's going to look brighter underneath the pole just because we have to use this pole to throw out into this area. So you're going to have higher foot candles closer to the pole, mm -hmm. but there's no other place to put poles or anything. This is really the only ideal spot. And so the fixture on the top of the pole, you're going to have one fixture and it's going to face the ATM lobby. So it's so the spillage is only going to be in the direction of the building. It's not going to go towards the street. Correct. There's nothing facing the street, nor the other property behind it. OK. Why are there the two blue squares there? Are there so two there's squares? one facing the parking area mm -hmm. out here, and there's one facing towards the building. So it is two poles fixtures. Are they on the same mount or different mount? Yeah, same pole, same pole. Oh, OK. Two yeah. fixtures, one pole. OK. Yeah. So you're actually then going to end up with a, so the fixture, the, the square that's um, on the top of the, that horizontal line facing the parking lot, that is going to have its own radius as well. So it will actually be lighting beyond the radius that's demonstrated. Right, so it's going to provide, let me pull up to here. So it's gonna provide lighting, you know, to the general right, like this parking area over here. Okay. But mainly for covering this circle right here, the outer circle, but it is going to provide light to the parking lot. No, nothing to like, nothing spilling off property towards the street, but it will provide general parking lighting as well. Okay. Was there a second radius that needed to be? Yeah, I can just go through all of them if you want. Just quickly, I think that'll yeah. answer that last question. Mm -hmm. So this right here is a five foot radius. There's one right in front of the ATM. So this is like a closed vestibule that is open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So it's right outside the lobby. This needs to be five foot candles, but we're not doing anything here. These are two fixtures out of scope. So we're not changing anything to that area. This area right here, this bigger one coming out needs to be a five foot candle minimum. So I believe on our last planning board, we had these three these say already ones that means we're removing and patching them we had can lights there so this area was a lot brighter we didn't need these can lights because we have these two wall lights here which provide enough lighting to this area so we helped reduce a hot spot underneath the canopy by removing these three fixtures and while meeting the minimum and the the two wall lights are preferred over the canopy lights because they provide light further out is that why they do provide more light further out and it it is probably the better option. I'm just thinking aesthetically, the better option is the canopy light, but um, not if you're trying to go beyond. Yeah, we, that. we definitely need the lighting still in the general area. I would like re removing these two wall lights, I would be less of an ideal design wise than removing these three, just based on how much light they're throwing. Because <laughs> they're going to throw light out instead of just down. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, <clears throat> I thought, uh, didn't you say that you're also removing some light, some wall lights uh, in the front, the old, um, the ones that project uh, at, an, at an angle? So we are removing, there's two wall lights on the side of the building that we are removing. But not on the front. There's, there's a floodlight at the very top of the building that we're removing, but there are no, no there, the two wall lights that we're removing, we're replacing. So there are two there, but the, those, the CDCH ones are the two wallets that are existing and we're coming back with the full cutoff LED fixture. 
All right. Okay. So that that's my question. Uh, you've got a location of two existing wall lights, which you're replacing with a new light fixture. Am I correct? Correct. All right. But the new light fixture it um, projects the light directly down. Doesn't project the light out. It projects down and out. So it's not projecting at a forty-five degree angle, but it does project out still. All right, have you run uh, the photometrics using the existing wall fixtures, which project yes. out? Yes, we, so we have an existing condition showing what's there is currently not passing, and we, bring, we make our design just to bring it up to the minimum. Okay, can we see what, uh, where, do you have that? Uh, you know that? I have it on here. Is this... Um, let me see if I have it. Give me one second. I see though that those new fixtures. Thought I had one. I don't know. It might be preferable because they're aiming down. I know, but the the whole point is projecting light away oh. from the building. Yeah. To provide coverage. <clears throat> I think they do. It's a good, good question to make sure. One second. The photometric um, graph of that fixture would would tell a story too. The, the vertical cross section. So I don't actually have that on me. Yeah. So I can, I can speak to it, but I can't show you exactly what it's doing. Okay, because the, the, the question that I'm asking mm -hmm. is that <clears throat> we have a, a, an existing wall fixture, which um, previously you said projects more light or, or light more uh, away from the building. And so uh, I guess as opposed to the new light fixture, which um, restricts it more in uh, or downward as opposed to 45 degrees away. Am I correct? Correct. All right. So uh, if we are trying to light up the area within the 60 uh, foot radius, then uh, I guess the, the question is. Uh, so the main reason for anything that's happening underneath here was to reduce the light levels uh, underneath the canopy. The, if we add in all these can lights to take off of, take out these wall lights, we may be failing in some areas and it's going to look brighter. So correct me if I'm wrong, but when we had our meeting with the planning board, this was one of the solutions that we thought of together that might be the way to go. Okay. So Alex, is, if, if I'm understanding correctly, what you're saying is by removing some of these lights and putting in these new wall lights from uh, the edge of the food town all the way across all, you know, those there's, there's three, or four storefronts there, mm -hmm. they will all be lit evenly from Food Town to the corner of the building. Is that right? Was that the, the goal? Correct. Yeah. As opposed and to having this, as opposed to having these gradations of light quality across the facade of the building. Correct. And the only area that is going to be really lower is the last area, just because there's no other lights there. Right. But then at okay. that point, you're kind of getting the spill from the food town, uh, you know, the, the glass in the front of food town and their own lighting scheme. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, except uh, I, I have a hard time understanding how you would have a more uniform dis, uh, distribution of the light when in fact you have to delete certain canopy lights uh, because it, there's a hot spot there. So the real problem is if we remove these two wall lights, you see how this is a 5.3 and a 5.8 and the minimum is five. 
They're that's awesome. coming from these two wall lights. If we remove these and go only canopy fixtures, it's not going to spill out and we're going to be feeling well, Okay, but those are the, the new light, the new uh, wall fixtures, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, if you had the old wall fixtures, what would the, what would the light, uh, the illumination levels be in that I can circle? Tell you. Let me, I actually can tell you that. So give me one second. So if we left everything as is and did not change anything, this five foot radius right here would be a 14 foot candles. Over here would be around 15 foot candles and over here would be 14 foot candles. So it's significantly brighter. The conditions today are significantly brighter than what we're proposing. Okay, so in other words, by replacing it, you're actually uh, lowering the, the light levels within that five foot or that 10 foot radius. Correct. Okay. Okay. Sorry to make that confusing. <laughs> Everything is confusing. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's no more or less really, confusing than what we've already looked at. And New York is confusing because you may be good in this one area and then you change something to fix it. And then the next thing you know, you know, over here you're failing. So it's just, there's a lot of different rules that have to be met compared to other states. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, basically what we're looking at is, uh, is trying to establish a, a uniform distribution of lights from the light fixtures. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. because of the lights, uh, the, the it's not as direct or bright. So, um, so um, can you? The the only one that I'm concerned about is, and you know that I'm now concerned about. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I take it back. I'm concerned about a couple of other things, but the next issue, uh, the two light fixtures that are mounted on. Uh, the fascia of the of the canopy. Um, These two right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, can you tell us what? And you know, and again, you know that that is something that is shining the light directly down. But um, I, I'm just trying to see how that. Looks. Yeah, I can show you something that it may be hard to read, but it's going to show you. So we go out there and survey all these readings for compliance, mm -hmm. and I can show you what it is there existing, and it might help you understand why we're adding it. Okay. So I'm just going to bring this up, um, and I can just kind of read through it. So this is, we go out to the, the site at night, and we take the foot candles at every single level. And this is what the existing foot candles are. So what this is saying, I'm just gonna to try to put them all side to side so it might be better, is this is the front of the ATM and this is an angled reading. And right now this angled reading is about right here, the edge of our circle. There's zero foot candles here. So there needs to be a minimum of two. Right now, today there are zero foot candles. So the whole idea of these two is to bring this 30 and 50 foot, and even out here, this 30 and 50 foot into compliance. So the, if I go into now the radius down here, this one is mainly for the 50 foot compliance area, and but we have to add the second one for the 60 foot. Because the way these vertical readings are taken is you're pointing the vertical reading at the face of the building. So even though there's a pole light here, if we did not have this light here, you'd be pointing at the face of the building and you would maybe be getting light spillage from underneath the canopy or maybe this YF1, but there's no light pointed at out, out into the parking lot. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Can you show us an, uh, a picture of the uh, fascia and how the uh, the new light fixture is going to be 
installed on it. Sure. So it might be easier if we just. Let me get in here on Google Maps or if I can. Should we pull up some photos? And let me see if I have my engineering plans for my last set of documents because they should not have changed that much. Because right now one's mounting here and one is mounting right here. So I'm going to pull up a site plan from our engineer real quick. We have one. So we're still working on our engineering set of drawings, which should be done this Friday. So I don't have where they're going to be pulling power from, but all the power is going to be connected to the Wells Fargo building. And usually we can make notes saying, you know, no exposed conduit items like that. So there's nothing not pleasing on the outside of the facade besides just the fixture itself. Okay. Well, I, I think that is, that would be something that we would it certainly should be able to power it from, from behind, uh, because that that's um, uh, basically a um, uh, uh, it's, it's a wall, and so certainly uh, from the back, it's a parapet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's got the top part, the roof, and then the <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So. So you're you're talking about attaching. I, I think that we would like to see uh, where, um, where these light fixtures would be installed. And, and am I correct? Uh, just taking a look at, um, we're, we're really more interested in the, uh, at least I'm interested in the elevation because I think that's from our uh, viewpoint, the aesthetics has more to do with where the light fixtures mounted on that fascia or the, the, the front face of the parapet mm -hmm. as opposed to in plan. Yeah, I think that the concern that I would have, I, I'm not concerned about the um, design of the fixture itself because it's, um, it, it's the design of it is kind of neither here nor there, but I am, I just wanna know you know exactly the the height that it's going to be mounted at because if it is is will any of the spill from the fixture be affecting the signage that's already on the side of the building are you going to have um a conflict between the the lighting that's there to illuminate the signs and then you're adding this additional lighting are you going to have spill from the new fixtures or can they be <coughs> excuse me can they be mounted low enough that they'll be um, kind of, that, that, that the light will be below the signage. So they should all be at the very, okay, I'm, it's darn hard to see and I might be able to pull a better one, but uh, let me see if I can actually get a better rendering than that. Cause we have a rendering showing kind of where they're installed. So if you give me one second, I might help better illustrate it. Because uh, the other thing is, is that uh, <clears throat> I, 
I would like to, to at least have some idea of, you know, uh, I see we have one light fixture, which is right at the corner. Uh, now, does that mean that all of the other light fixtures, which are wall mounted, the existing light fixtures that are wall mounted are being removed? So are you talking about this area right down here? <clears throat> no, I'm talking about that in the front. I, I mean, the side part, uh, I think that uh, what you're proposing is really not that much different from what is there. And the same thing with the rear. Are you, so you're uh, talking about these sign yeah. lights? They, well, they're, you're not touching them. They are staying there. I, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, between. No, let's go back to the to the front image. Uh, yeah, the front. Uh, there is a light fixture which is between the entrance to Wells Fargo and the storefronts right there. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that that's one of the light fixtures that's being removed. This is one of them that is getting replaced. It's getting replaced with the new uh, light fixture. Correct. This was the uh, around the front lobby area that we were talking about earlier. Okay. And, and see, I'd like to be able to, to see... What, and there's another one that is also being replaced. Am I correct? Right. It's, it's right. You can't see in this photo, but it's right on the other side of the door. Okay. So right. we'd like to be able to see the, the facade that is being affected by the changes that you're proposing. Now, uh, am I correct that the light fixture that is going to be mounted in that location is going to be the same light fixture that's mounted on the, the, the front of the parapet? Correct. Okay, um, I would think that what would be uh, the optimum location would be between the uh, the light fi the light fixtures for the signage. No, to the right of that, to the, there, be in that open space, right in the middle of that open space, and then the other one would be in the middle of that panel on the left side, all the way over. Here? Yeah. For so here, the, it, here? No. In the middle of, the, of that space, none, no, to the right, to the right. You want? There. Okay. Yes. That I would think would be the, the first place. The second one would be on the left side in the middle of that recess, the, the slightly recessed uh, parapet. Go to the left. All right, in the middle of that, middle of that, all the way to the left, right? Yep. Okay. I, and I, I'll <clears throat> I'll open that up to other members of the boards. Do they have any other uh, alternative suggestions as far as location of these two light fixtures? Well, I guess I, I, I asked a question and I think Alex was answering it while answering another question at the same time, but are the fixtures going to be, you know, where uh, on the, at, at what heights on the parapets will they be mounted? Are they going to be at the very top or are they going to be yeah. at the very bottom or are they going to be somewhere in the middle? They're going to be uh, at the very top. Right. Okay. So then if that's the case, then I agree with Al that they should be spaced because you're going to be able to see the light coming out of them more obviously because you know they'll be reflecting on the top of the they'll be reflecting on the height of the parapet going down so the only concern i have is we move the fixture right here we're going to fail this reading right here the reason this is here is because it's the only fixture reaching out to this section so i if we move this we're going to fail and it's not going to work um I can show you this is kind of a small rendering of where the fixtures are located. You can see that's the top of the parapet and that's the top of the building. So it's in the gap between the two, two of the existing signs. Correct. At the top. And the other one is further down at the top of that lip. And are those horizontal bars, are they representing the tops of the signs or the light fixtures above them? This is representing the light fixtures on the signs. Okay. Does this rendering 
This rendering only shows the light from the new fixtures, not the light from those horizontals, right? Correct, because the light from the horizontal fixtures are... Doesn't do anything for you, right? Right, because they're pointed at the signs. They're not throwing anything out. Yeah. Well, they're, they're throwing light down. And, uh, but it's primarily oriented to lighting up the sign. That, that was the whole point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I, I, I guess, you know, um, the other thing is uh, going back to your rendering. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, does it help any if, if the, the two light fixtures or uh, if the two light fixtures that are mounted on the wall are in fact on the face of the parapet? So let me see what they look like. It's ready here. We re it really won't help because where they're located, it's not the trouble area that we're trying to fix. It's no, no. I, I, I'm I'm saying in addition to to what you have now. I, I mean. I, I, I'm just looking at what I see in the rendering. So you're saying instead of adding it here, move them to the wall? Yeah, to the parapet. So then if we do that. You may have to go restore some of the, the, the soffit lights. lights. Right, exactly. And we still need these wall lights here because the wall lights were making us pass this. Uh, the wall lights is making us pass this five foot reading right here. So without the wall lights, we'd be failing right there. Well, but you're talking about the wall, the uh, the fixture. No, the fixture would be at the front of the the parapet, which is right at the edge of that. Mm, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but then, wouldn't you end up with a shadow line? Like, wouldn't the the light not if the if the fixture's mounted on the top of the parapet, then there's going to be a shadow along the door itself. Well, you have to leave some of the canopy lights that are but, some of the, yeah, we're, and that even he's we deleting. Bring back all the canopy lights without running it like this 6.1, this 5.7 could um, be below because this is right, it's not exactly underneath the canopy, but it's like underneath the canopy area where the wall lights wouldn't be shining anywhere towards it. I, I would say, Al, to your to your concern, or I would say that the the bank branch itself, the Wells Fargo location itself, it is separated somewhat from Angelina's. There's, and, I, and I'm and i comfortable with it kind of existing with its own pattern. My concern is just how these new lights that are gonna be mounted along the top of the roof are going to affect the three other storefronts and their signage. It seems like it looks like from the rendering, there's gonna be a lot of spill of these lights onto the signs themselves, but it's not going to be consistent across the three. And we also don't know how the existing, um, you know, kind of long uh, bar lights are going to interact with the new lights. Um, you know, we wouldn't want to be a approving something for the purpose of this tenant, if it could indirectly or directly affect the signage of the other three tenants, you know, sort of in the plaza. And I, and I well, guess the concern that I have is about the heights where the, the fixtures themselves are being placed. If they were placed lower, then mm -hmm. there wouldn't be that same spillage onto the other sign, the, the rest of the signage. Well, right. uh, except the bottom of the canopy. Well, it, that would solve that problem and would still cast the light into the parking lot and below. Well, well, and also those businesses are open at different times. I mean, for now, the tenants could change, but we're talking about, you know, um, you know, the, the, the dry cleaner and a hair salon, right? Right. Those are the only two tenants. I mean, so and, far. And pizza place. And, 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 right. But when you, even if new tenants enter those spaces, um, they may be swapping out their lighting for something to accommodate whatever business they're hosting there anyway. We may be reviewing new lighting there. Could I suggest if we're worried about that, all these light levels need to be happening during hours of darkness. So there could be a way where we could just only have those on during hours of darkness. There you go. Yeah. Well, isn't that the case now? I 
I, 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 I don't well, remember that's, seeing that's the lights on during the day. Yeah, these, these will all be connected to an override switch or a photo cell. So right. they all should be on, you know, the camping light should be on at all times, but I, everything should be on during hours of darkness. But just in case, we can just say that just so during the day, it's not extra light shining against it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not concerned about what it looks like during the day. I'm only concerned about what it looks like at night when the lights, okay. when the lights are on. Well, I'll tell you the thing that concerns me, and, and this is going back to the, you know, looking at the rendering. I mean, we've got three different types of lights and, you know, uh, it, it seems like this is not really a, a well thought out scheme or a design. I mean, this is uh, something which uh, addresses the, the specific photometric requirements and that's about it. But it doesn't really address uh, how, it, how you know, it affects the, the building that it's in. If those two lights which are currently on the wall are moved up, at least then there's some sort of, uh, it, you know, uh, it appears as there's some sort of design logic as to where these light fixtures are, are being located. Uh, and, and so that is what I'm trying to do because ultimately, uh, irrespective of who actually is the tenant, you know, that's probably not going to change. And uh, that, I, and also as Sean said, I, I would like to see, you know, a, a rendering of what the lighting would look like with the light fixtures for the signs illuminated. That and also the other thing which uh, may have an impact on the photometric uh, requirements is what is the light coming through the storefronts. We take the light levels at night, so if that we would already have included that. Well, I, then I, frankly, I don't see it because I, I don't see, uh, you know, obviously you have Angelina's and uh, the uh, the cleaners, the dry cleaners, and that's not. And that's I don't see that in the rendering. But he has to provide lighting at 3 a.m. when those people could have everything off. Oh, good. Right? He has to provide the minimum. Yeah, yeah I think that the, I, I, I think if I can, if I can summarize my concerns and uh, the concerns of the chair, it really is un, having some sort of understandable pattern or rhythm to where the fixtures are placed. Yeah. Uh, I, as I said, I, I think it's, you can kind of divide the Wells Fargo storefront from the other three because it takes up space on its own. It's on a corner. There's a big gap in between them, but it's those two fixtures um, between the three storefronts, their own signs and their own light fixtures that it just needs to be a little bit more um, it just seems to be just be t a little bit clearer why things are placed in certain places. I can see even that the fixture on the left you've raised up. If you if you do, if you want to just um, go back to that to the photo to the daytime photo, um, you know the fixture on the left you've raised up so that it follows the roof line, which on the one hand kind of makes sense, but in the evening when the lights are on. You don't see that roof line. So, but what you do see are two overhead lights that are at different heights. You know what I mean? Because the one in between the cleaners and Angelinas is going to be lower. You, you're you're not, and because they're full cutoff, you don't actually see the roof above them. So, what I want to say about that though is, we usually do try to keep them all in line at the same height. The only time we raise heights is if we need that extra height to shine out. So I can double check that, but that's there's we're not usually just following the roof line or something like that. We try to keep all the fixtures the same height. In this case, it was probably raised because the roof was higher and it allowed us to place it higher. Okay. So, and my only, I also just have one question about this area because there are two existing wall fixtures here. Right. So from what my understanding is, you would rather re remove these completely, place them in line with the other fixtures 
but then we would have to also add back these canopy fixtures and maybe even keep a wall light to reach the light levels necessary. And then you would have this really hot spot underneath here. Well, except why do you have to add so many canopy light fixtures to have a hot spot? Well, if we have to have, if we have to remove these, we have to reach the minimum here. And right now the only thing providing the light here are these wall lights. I don't think that was I don't think that was a direction. I think it was just we were exploring different ideas. Well, that and also how many how many canopy lights are, are you talking about removing? I wouldn't know unless we run the option. Right now we have all of them on. Because if I, if I, I'm just thinking through this, if I remove both these, I'm going to have to keep all these here. Okay. And there's still a possibility that I might have to have one of these wall lights, maybe this one, because it's closer. And that's going to create, this is already out of 13, you got another can, it's just going to be brighter. Could you simply bring down that one light that's super high and align it with the other one? Address what's going on with the signs so you don't wash them out unequally and then leave the other two at Wells Fargo that are kind of off and removed at where they are. And I'm sorry, can you say which lights again? I guess I'm saying Wells Fargo kind of stands on its own there. So you leave yeah. those two down on the wall mm -hmm. and you remove the canopy lights like you're planning. And then you take the two on the left and put them at the same elevation and all dress probably as low as possible to still get your light levels and not wash out the signage, but to be at the same elevation so there's a rhythm to the to this lighting intervention. Yeah, I, I understand what the general goal is. I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just worried by moving it, we're still gonna fail and we're not gonna have the answer that we want because it's just, it's low here. What are you supposed to have there? Three? This is, it needs to be a two here. We have a 3.3 .3. and it's coming from this one. If we move it, move it any lower. No, I don't think we're talking no, about we're moving down lower. We're talking about moving uh, SM, the, the one above it lower. This one is the one that's on the wall. All right, but the one at the top of your drawing is the one. This one right here, okay. Moving this one to be in line with the other one. I mean, that's that's one idea. I'm, I'm not saying to do it. I'm just throwing ideas out there that might work. I, I, get, I, I get what you're saying. You're looking at this. You're seeing two wall lights here, a wall light here, and one over here that's higher, right? Yeah. So I, I understand that. It's not... So I, under, I understand what you're saying. You want some form of uniformed... Yeah, well, at, at least some polarity. sort of logic. Kind of haphazard, so... Yeah, some sort of logic as far as how okay. how it's laid out. For example, you can if you lowered the one all, all the way to the left, so, uh, so that it kind of brackets the the two light sign lights, mm -hmm. then at least that it looks like there's some sort of logic as to why uh, the light. When I do there. look at this, this is the one that I definitely see that we might be able to lose by uh, lower, but I don't want to say there's no logic because we've gone through four or five four boards with the planning board and everything we've done has been to try to reduce the levels and make everything and, and meet the minimums. It's just really hard with the locations we can mount poles or fixtures to meet those minimums. Uh, right, and, and you know, the, there, is, uh, there is design logic to where you put light fixtures and it's not just in response to uh, the required photometric levels there, there's also, um, you know, an overall layout, which um, I think that we're trying to address because that's our purview. Mm -hmm. uh, you're dealing with the planning board because they have their requirements, but our requirements are uh, different from what the, the planning board has. And so, um, welcome to our world. <laughs> no, um, I, I get it. I can definitely see what we can do. I don't, all I don't right. know how we can do, but definitely try to make it more thought into it and how it looks. Um, 
Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, um, can we see the uh, the uh, the pole mounted fixtures in the pole that you're proposing? Yes. So. This is the pole fixture that we're proposing right here. Okay, and what does the pole look like? So this is an example of a pole-based detail. So it's gonna be a three foot concrete pole that's going to be painted yellow based off of comments from the board just so no one runs into the pole. So it's, it's a three foot base. Correct. And above that it's 30 foot. Not 30, that 30 foot max, our pole is not 30, it's not going to be that tall. Okay. It's, yeah, sorry. Our okay. fixture is going to be lighted at, it's not going to be at 20 feet. So it's a three foot base, 17 foot pole fixture, bottom of the fixture is at 20 foot. And the base is about 18 inches in, um, in diameter, is that right? Correct, yep. Okay. I, you're going to have to remind me, are there any other light poles in that parking lot anywhere or along the, or along the sidewalk? I, I can't think of what there are. I don't think there are. You would think I'm there like every day, you would think I would notice, but okay. So it's not, so it, it doesn't really have anything to match to because it will be the only one on the site. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that between this solution and some of the earlier proposals of mounting it on, you know, on the building or raising it up. I think that in this context, a, um, you know, a, a street lamp or a pole mounted fixture in a, in a parking lot is not out of the ordinary. Um, so I think that it's a, it's a, it's a better solution than some of the, than some of the earlier proposals, but so as far as um, progressing this further then, it, I, just to be clear that the conversation that you're having tomorrow night with the planning board is, uh, has any, has this discussion negated any of the things that you're expecting to speak to them about? Um, the only thing that I can see is it's gonna hurt underneath the canopy and the light levels and the hot spots underneath it. Okay, so you'll be able to determine then what amount of flexibility you have with the with the heights of the two fixtures um, on the far left side, or I guess it's the south. Yeah, these, side. these over here. And yeah. I, I'm not trying to be. I'm just trying to be honest, and just from how much we've looked at this, this site is already pretty lean, just based off what, what we can do and where we can place things. That I don't right. know how much flexibility there actually is. I'm not saying there's no flexibility. I just want everybody to understand that. It's not okay. that we don't want to, it's our job as well as Fargo's designer is to bring them into compliance that we can't not yeah. have a design that doesn't do it. And, so. and we understand that, uh, but okay. you also have to understand that uh, it's our responsibility to review the aesthetic impacts of changes that are being made to structures within the district. Mm -hmm. This is a change that you know we have uh, you know, we have say over, we, we had long discussions with the owner of the property in, in when he uh, redesigned the entire um, food town complex. And so, you know, this is not the first go around that we've had with this particular piece of property. Uh, and all we're trying to do is trying to uh, make it as, um, as uh, appropriate to the historic district as we can. So uh, it's not that we're picking on you. Uh, it's, <laughs> this is the same treatment that we get, or that we give to all of our applicants. We're, we're looking at certain things and we're just trying to make it the best it, it can be for the district, okay? So let me just recap. Anybody have any issues with what they're proposing as far as the rear facade? No. I think as far no. as the rear facade, we will give you as much leeway as you need. How about the north facade? And I, I see what we're doing is we're taking off two of the existing light fixtures and we're putting back three. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, 
that sums it up. So the so, only one that we have uh, issues with that we, and okay, and, and just to finalize, how about the uh, light pole? No. I, I think that that's. Okay. Fun. It's utilitarian, uh, you know. Okay, uh, I see Matt. Matt, have you raised your hand? Would you like to be recognized? Yeah, whenever, whenever it fits in, it's fine. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so it, it, with the concern about tenancy, I mean, I think we need to be clear, first of all, that this is to, this is to meet state-mandated code, right, uh, with any ATM. And obviously, state code trumps our local code, so this, this has to move forward. You know, the code enforcement officer was clear on that when I, when I met with her on this. With respect to concern about changes in tenancy, I mean, what we could do on the site plan is certainly make this part of Wells Fargo's tenancy, right, as the tenant. The, all these things could be removed where they desired to be removed if the tenant were to change, right? But I think that what, what concerns me and, I, and, I, and obviously concerns the, the applicant as well is that to start talking about the lighting plan, I mean, it, it, or the location of, of an architectural feature like a fixture, it then changes the photometrics of the whole plan. So I, you know, he gets caught in a you know in a catch twenty two situation. Um, I mean, I, he can certainly take a shot at it. Certainly, a reasonable request. I would just hate for this to go on and on as he tries to reach photometrics. I mean, I think I, I certainly agree with the work you know and the the intent of the first design where everything was mounted on poles facing out. I mean, it would kind of look like a, you know a gulag or something. I mean. Um, and that, that was a great improvement, obviously, to get rid of all those posts and those fixtures, you know, flushing, you know, light out, you know, throwing it from the parapet. I agree. Um, but, and that's great. I think that, but he is still also limited in the fact that he has to meet the state code. And so if the HRB is concerned about, you know, we, the planning board could certainly make it as part of the tenancy that the, that the lighting program or elements of it, I think really we'd just be talking about the front, right? Also, what's important to understand too, this lighting is, is dust to dawn, whereas the other lights, I don't know if they turn off there, um, but they might. I don't, I don't really go by there that late at night. Um, and that's important, obviously, for the site safety. And that could also be eliminated as well if the tenancy were to change. We could make a note on the site plan. I think that I, changing yeah. the, the tenancy is nice, but um, that tenant could be there another 30 years. Um, I think that it's not unreasonable to ask to move a light fixture and to balance the photometrics with the design. And perhaps there's a fourth fixture that's needed. Perhaps there's another pole that's needed to get the light out there. Um, and yeah, I, the design. And I don't. So I guess. So I guess. So I, either, I, I guess then without without either, but there's a that that's the design challenge is to get something that looks good and meets the photometrics and you. He needs to balance both. And Matt, I, I think that, um, you know, I've certainly have dealt with, uh, you know, uh, working with a design and the lighting implications. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I have worked often with, I went to actually architecture school with a lighting designer who thinks that uh, the architecture is supposed to work its way around the lighting design. So I, 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 I'm familiar with the limitations of what you can and can't do. And uh, I, I think that none of the things that we have asked are really unrealistic. It just means it's a question of, uh, of what design criteria that uh, Wells Fargo needs to follow in order to, uh, to give us the lighting levels that he seeks. And, and trust me, I, I know he, there are a lot of options that we're not going to even go down because that would be going down the rabbit hole. And, and you know, that's certainly not what we want to do. What we want to do is make this design work as best as it can for our historic district. So we understand your concern. And I, I don't think that anything concerning the front of the building that we have asked are, are really too unrealistic. No, it's not. I agree. All right. So I, I guess to sum up, Alex, what we would like for you to do is take a look at the front facade. And, and you know, certainly it, 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 
I, the biggest part of any lighting um, rendering is setting up the design to begin with. So that's been accomplished, but I think that um, the uh, site, the, the sign lights will have an impact. And uh, we do want, would like for you to take a look at uh, perhaps moving those around. I think that the, uh, the canopy lights uh, in the past had given some uniformity of what, uh, you know, of how that, uh, that walkway in front of the building was lit. And, and I think that uh, if, some, if some of those uh, canopy lights go back, then I think that, would, uh, that wouldn't be too bad. There's no, I, I understand your concern about the, uh, the hotspot there. So having said that, um, I think that as far as the north facade, as far as the west facade, you know, uh, we really have no additional comments. I think it's the front facade. A and let me ask you a question. Um, you know, um, has the has the thought ever been raised as far as another pole mm. uh, sort of? So maneuver? we. Unfortunately, over here, these are two handicapped spaces. Right. So you can't place a full a pole next to handicapped spots just based off of ramps, accessibility, and things like that. The, left, the space to the left. This one right here. No, to the left on the here? The east. Yeah. Yeah, to the east. So rather than being at that T at the bottom, you put it a little bit to the left of that T. You so, see where go yeah. down. Down yeah. here. Here? Further down. Further down. All the way down. Oh, right here. Rather, you could you could just put it on that left in that left space, no? If I mean I we try to avoid placing poles because if you put it at the end of the spot, it's almost in the middle of the drive through. So it'd be more of a no, hazard. I'm not that, but um yeah. What about in the uh not all of that handicap. Um, I believe it's these two spots are handicapped. But the pedestrian space, let me finish, in between the two, not all of it. So I they, think you impinge on some of that. I'm not sure. You'll have to check that. But Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't know if I would necessarily advocate for a second poll so close to the first poll, just to avoid the issue of the placement of the other fixtures. But why don't we give Alex an opportunity to kind of take a look at this and run his calculations and then we can look at it again in two weeks at our next meeting and by that point as well it sounds like everything will be wrapped up with the planning department. Yeah, can I uh, just go over what I think the problem is just so I make sure that I have the right direction. Sure. Okay. Uh, so main concerns is I'm definitely going to check to see if we can have this one lowered in line with this one, maybe even move this light right here over here. So it's on the Wells Fargo space. Maybe that frees up this light fixture to maybe not even be there. Um, definitely check underneath the canopy, but it's really, the it's not uniform. So that's one of the main concerns on the front of the facade. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if those wall mounted fixtures could all be moved up to the parapet, that would be, I, I think that then, you know, that's certainly a direction. What about we, down below the signs? Um, I, I, would be, I would be more supportive of that because I'm also concerned about the spillage onto the signs themselves because it's okay. because the signs are quite tight to each other and because the pattern is a little inconsistent, I'd be concerned about some of the signs getting more light and some of them not getting as much, but if it's possible to move them lower, again, I, I think keeping in mind that the fixtures themselves, as far as we can tell from the diagram, are quite streamlined and minimal in their design. Um, if they could be moved lower, that would that would keep them out of the um, out that that would keep the spill away from the other signs. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, definitely can see what we can do for those. Okay, and, and, and see, the, the other thing, just to uh, give you a heads up, what we're go going to need is 
something which is a little bit more specific. In other words, where um, you know the new light fixtures are going to be located uh, has to, has to be specific enough. And I'm talking about the document that we have to sign off on. Uh, Just so that we can hand it off to the building inspector and right. they're going to be able to see the heights. We're going to have the ex exact mounting heights on our actual plans. Okay, how about the north-south location? In other words, along the face. Here? Or north? Yeah, yeah in, in other words, uh, you know, for example, if you go back to the, to the, um, uh, and to the, the photo, you know, the, the, you know, the photograph, I mean, you know, we've had a lot of applicants. What they've done is they've given us a photograph and then they've indicated on the photograph a dimension, you know, like. Uh, right, so this, this photograph is based off the, oops, sorry, is based off the dimensions and heights off this plan. So that's just more for reference than anything, just to show it's going to be installed off this diagram and we have exact exact widths, lengths, and heights on here. Okay, so I see, you got one the foot. The heights are just on the side because it's foot not six. an yeah. Yeah. Okay. Heights over here, yeah. Okay. All right, great. And Alex, anytime that you have any updated materials, you, you're you welcome to send them over and I can share them with the rest of the board. Um, you don't have to wait until we meet in two weeks, but we'll just Perfect. obviously not be able to talk about it for two weeks, but we can, um, you know, you can up submit updated materials whenever they're available. Yeah, I'll definitely see what we can do. And if there's some weird thing where, you know, we have two options and maybe I'm not sure which one is the correct direction, maybe I'll have time to present, not present both, but get together and send you both and we kind of go from there. Okay. I understand what you're saying. So we'll do everything possible to at least make it more uniform or have more of a design intent instead of just reaching the minimum intent per se. Great, we appreciate we it. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any other um, comments or things that they want to pass on to Alex? I just want to say thank you for taking the poles off the top of the building. I think it's a big improvement. <laughs> we never wanted to do that in the first place. Believe us, that <laughs> not, it was not a good solution or start. It's, it was it's, more of get decline so the landlord would have some flexibility with us. Vastly improved. Um, Already, thank we're you. almost yeah. there. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have Josh um, for 26 Main Street. Um, and yes, so Josh, you also should be able to share if you have your materials, um, or I can share on your behalf. Uh, I think you're going to have to share. My computer's not cooperating with me. I've been trying to get the documents up. But no, no, no problem. Working uh, um, is not working so well. <laughs> just give me one second. It, 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 you had it all in one PDF, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just get that open. <clears throat> I think I even labeled it um, historic review board or something when I sent it to you guys. Yeah. Uh, Yes, actually, it was. It, it all just came in one packet from Jeff. Yeah. So. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just scroll through your application and just get to the images. If that's yeah, it should be. Yeah, the next page will be the site plan. So that's gonna be the roof layout of the 21 LG panels, um, non glare simple 20 just the way they have the top of their um dormers we had to fit them around mm -hmm. on all three sides but uh it's pretty much just a straightforward on the back of the house you're not really gonna see the panels it, it, it doesn't seem to be detrimental from the road or anything like that with all the site assessments we did so but if i'm if i'm looking at this correctly they're going to be facing Wait. south is that yeah. right Yes, yeah, sorry, yes. So they're gonna be above the, I mean, I know it's kind of strange because it's a corner building, but they're, they're gonna be above sort of the primary facade or the front corner. Right. Yeah, just with the angle of the roof though, I don't, I, for, according to what I was told, I don't think 
it was too much of an impact, but that's kind of why I'm in front of you guys <laughs> to see if it is or not. So that's unfortunately, right. yeah. how, how thick are these panels? Like how much above the roof do they stick? I, I they agree. are flush mount. We have just a rail system underneath. There's, I want to say, three inches or? I think it's an eighth of an inch to two inches. Oh, there are there. Mm. Doesn't look like it's actually called out as a at a height. Yeah, they normally don't call it the height on the <clears throat> on our engineering plans and drawings. I believe it's only off mm -hmm. of that rail because there's a rail right there. That's what that um one spot right there is. Uh, I want to say maybe an inch and a half to two inches off the rail at the most, but I can get more information on that. Um, I don't know if the spec sheets will tell what the railing actually holds it up yeah i don't I, I agree with whoever told you that, that, that i live around the corner so yeah, it's that, the first time i've had that question so i can definitely know. get with our architects and ask them what the height is I yeah do, it looks like do, this is calling out the width of the panel itself at 1.57 inches if i'm yeah. reading this correctly right here Yes. And then you're saying that the there's the height of the rail itself, which looks like it's another 1.57. So all, if I'm, is that this measurement? No, that is the no. same. You're looking at the frame, which no. is- Yeah, no, that's just the framework, yeah. The framework and then the rail is below that. Oh, that's the frame, that's not yeah. right. But I, I there is the rail is below that. The, the angle of the roof that I don't think they're gonna be horribly visible and- um, yeah, I think that's kind of what made us can face any other direction either. So, yeah, I think that would made you kind of the perfect storm of this one is the angle of their roof definitely hides it and keeps their historic kind of look. You you might be able to see it by a glance, but it's not in your face like here we are. Right. I think something else to keep in mind too is that this oh. building is not an actual historic building. It's a it's a later addition to the district. Okay. Um, no, 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 and also, no. no. Sorry. No, it's it's not a later addition to the district. It was part of the district, but it, it was there was a major rehab done a number of years ago. Oh, so what? So the actual so the the building itself is a historic building that was renovated. I yeah. thought it was a newer construction. It, it was. It used to be the village garage. Before that, it was some mercantile shops too, like way back. So what was it? So the second it was it was part of the district. From from the beginning, it was part of the district. Okay, but in its but not in its current form. Well, no, no. Okay. Um, I stand corrected. I the other kind of element about it though that I did notice walking around was that because of its proximity to the train tracks. You, you kind of, the only time that you really have that sort of long view of it is if you're coming down Market Street. So it's, and I think yeah. to Lloyd's point and to Josh's point, to, to get, to, to be able to see the surface of this roof is, uh, it's not that obvious from very many places. The view, <laughs> the, well, the bird's eye view that you have in the lower corner is one which no one could ever actually witness so well and the thing is is that uh i i mean we have a number of buildings we where we have solar panels on the roof of course uh and uh, i you know my feeling is is that uh you know where else are you going to put solar panels mm -hmm. and you know it's the logical place to put it i think we should be encouraging um mm -hmm their application even if they're not ideal um ideally located we have other locations in the village um yeah i i mean typically the, main, the um, rivers river architects building where they don't they face west it's in right. it's not right it's the most, well and uh, it's most also oh, sorry, it's, fine. it's fine it's fine you know i i consider i think we've had this discussion before where we consider it kind of a utility that is going to, you know, it's expected to evolve over time. 
um, probably become less visible in its installation uh, in the future. Uh, you know, the, unless I'm misreading something, this is not the primary facade that- uh, It is, it, it, yeah. I, I mean- it, Oh, it is. It, yeah. Okay. Now, in other words, on the left side is Market Street and on the right side I is see. Main Street. I'm sorry, I misread the uh, uh, site plan. Um, but in either case, I mean, we have examples kind of, you know, all over the village. I know there's one, you know, one house down from me right now that's a much older example of a solar panel that's, you know, highly visible, frankly. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it, it's, it's like any other, you know, utility uh, object that's on your house. That, that's the way I view this. It's, it's right. not permanent. Well, and uh, yeah, th there are two points. One, it's an acknowledgement that we are now moving into the, we are now in the 21st century. Right. Um, and the second point is that uh, it, uh, it is removable. In other words, it's not a, a, a drastic permanent change. If at some point in the future, we come up with some way of not having to deal or, or not having some other alternative source of energy aside from solar power, they could be removed and the, um, you know, the roofing uh, restored to what is there. So uh, mm -hmm. it is a removable change. So my feeling is, is that uh, that's fine. And, and, and like you said, there are plenty of other examples throughout the village where they're certainly a lot more visible. Yeah. Didn't we approve on um, the house that's, um, I believe, next to or very close to uh, the Skybeat, what we call the Skybeat building. It's where Ascend Yoga Studio and the apothecary yeah. is. Um, I believe we approved solar panels on the primary facade of that structure, right? Didn't yeah. we? Yeah, that, and that was also another corner building. Exactly. Later building on rock street that's sort of like teal yeah yeah yeah. Nice. yeah because with solar panels and i know i explored this with my own house uh you, you're you're kind of limited in where you can place them because obviously they have to catch the sun right. and so you you know your choice is already limited right there so um again you know i i consider it a removable element and um you know it doesn't really bother me that it's visible from the public right away um, I agree. Uh, J uh, Josh, could you just talk through on this drawing or, or tell us where the, um, I see the, the service is in the lower or the sort of this corner here. So is that where the line would come off the array or is all of the wiring going to be inside the building? So the wiring will run down here because the electric, um, the inverter and everything is going to be on the side of the building. It'll be on the right. exterior to my knowledge because that is where the disconnect and everything is. I can get a final, I know they were going back today to look to see if we could hide it inside. That's always an update I could give you tomorrow. But okay. um, I right. believe it would be on the side corner right here unless they found a spot to put it inside. Cause we try to put them inside as much as we can. Right. All right, Can I, Can uh, is it possible to move the disconnect to the- Far corner? Uh, yeah, that corner. It could be after they did their, I didn't get the report from their site assessment today. That's what they were going to go look at again today. So once I have that in the morning, I can definitely look at that and shoot that over in an email to you guys. Cause they were trying to find the best way. So it wasn't, you couldn't see on the outside of the exterior building. So that report hasn't came in unfortunately yet today. Okay. Um, we try to put it in the garage and stuff if we can, but I didn't, they wouldn't, they've, didn't submit their report before the meeting, unfortunately. So I do apologize for that. You know, what we typically want to see is that any, um, you know, any wiring or anything like that, if it can't be on the inside, then it, then it's somewhat obscured from the street, from the public right of way. Okay. In this case, of course, you're on a corner. So you really have kind of multiple visible, <laughs> visible, facade, right. which we understand. Um, so if it were to, if we can just talk through it, if, if it were to run to this back corner and if it were, have, and, it, and if it did have to be exposed, would it come, would it run along the 
over the top of the ridge and then down and under, or would it have to come through along one of these eaves? How would it travel to that location? So they would make an access point right here at the ridge and then they would go underneath that roof and then they would pop it down on the side and run the conduit down to the actual meter and all that stuff. So it would be, it wouldn't be visible on the roof because they'd make a penetration at this top panel. Okay. And go through the rafters of the roof and then come out the side right there and then down. So it'd be underneath that eave is where they would make their exit point. Okay. And then it would be conduit. And it, I mean, if it had to be painted or something like that, it could be, but that's what they would use to come down on that side. Yeah, we've also found that a lot of times people are, just because of the architecture of the buildings, people try to follow the gutter line and, mm -hmm. and locate it kind of close to that. Although I'm assuming if that's where your panel is, then your gutters may actually be on the other corner. But um, okay, so either way, it would be, it would still be coming through the back part of the roof and then snaking down the side of the building. Yeah, for a less building. obtrusive view, yeah going in through the interior. Correct. Okay. Um, Al, what are your feelings as far as, um, you know, approval or approval with contingency based well, on the final? First, first let's, let us uh, go through our seeker uh, motion. Do I have a motion concerning seeker status? I would classify it type two as a minor modification to a residential structure. Oh, Do I have a second? Commercial. Do second. I have a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, I think that we can, we can vote on this um, because the only issue, well, uh, we can vote on this. That, let's, let's break this up into two votes and, you know, just so that we can at least keep it clear as to what we're uh, voting to approve. Uh, so th the first uh, motion that I'd like to consider is the installation of, of the solar panels as shown. Do I have a motion? Um, well, what's the second motion that you'd like to consider? Uh, well, that would, that would talk about the running of the electrical uh, oh, okay, so it's just the it's just the location of the panels themselves. Right. Okay. So, do I have a motion? I'll move that we approve as, as submitted. As submitted. Panel location. Okay. Do I have a second? Um, I'll second. second. Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, so aye. now let's let's talk about the how we run the electrical. Uh, wiring down to now uh, the existing electrical service is that in the corner where it says electrical service entry meter yeah that's where all the that's where we have to tie into yep I know but the, uh, what is there uh, uh, as far as the existing in other words uh, where it, does the electrical service come in overhead or underground as far as i know overhead all right so in other words electrical service comes in uh at that corner and then drops down to the electrical meter right according to what i was told but i haven't i haven't been on site yeah it looks like it, it looks like in that top corner over there is where it's coming it looks like it's coming right yeah there and maybe this is a cable line or a shadow. So it looks like it's coming across there. Okay. Which I, would make sense because I don't think it could be located closer to the um, train tracks. Also, there's everything's above ground down Lower Village, I believe. Right. Which is good given the water uh, rise. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> All right. I I guess if the existing electrical line is there, uh, I feel less uh, averse to running the uh, the electrical wires from the solar panel in that same location. It seems like it's clustering, um, you know, the 
electrical service inputs. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. There's also some HVAC units back there, Al. So I think it's clustering everything together. It's pretty organized back there. Actually. All right. Uh, in which case, then uh, I'll drop my recommendation as far as the other corner of the building. Um, do I have a motion as far as uh, the proposed electrical service or the electrical wiring run? Can I just have a quick question? Josh, are they gonna, th that, that service from the street, that's going to have to be maintained even after they have the solar panels, is that correct? Yes, yeah, they'll still be, it'll be um, still tied into the grid, yes. Okay, so that, so that wire that we're looking at is going to remain Yes. Yep. Because all they're going to do is they're going to, the utility company will come out and put an extra, they'll change the meter out to net metering. So everything right. can be um, monitored. So yeah, that wire will have to stay. Okay. So I would say then, Al, I, I would make a motion to accept the service but, uh, location as drawn. All right. Let me ask one question. Now, I, am I correct that uh, the, the wires from the solar panel then need to uh, come to an inverter? Yes, the inverter will be, I believe, on that same side. And they normally mark it on here. I don't know why they didn't. They normally will have the inverter right next to that meter, and I don't know why they don't have it on the plans. Yeah, that's just going to be all your spec sheets down there. Oh, OK. It should be on that same side of the meter disconnect of that house is where the inverter normally is located because they'll run all the electrical to the same side. Is there an image of the inverter with all the spec sheets? Yeah, if you scroll all the way down, it'll be right there. Go back up, keep going. Next one, one more, right here. So this is the size inverter that they're gonna have. It's a new HD wave, smaller impact. Is that mounted on the outside? That is mounted on the outside, yes. Uh, do you it's know if mounted right next to the utility meter? Do you know if they're doing the bigger one or the smaller one? They are doing. Scroll back up to the site plan for me, real quick, please. Okay. I'll keep going. Oh, sorry. It's actually yeah. Go to the picture of the roof. Okay, and then scroll. They're doing the seven point six, so they're doing the smaller one. The smaller, okay. So let yeah, me... the system size is a 7.6. So that's what they're doing is the smaller size inverter. Just, um, I, I could found on street view if I could share. So right, they'll be doing the one on the left, the very first one. Okay, I just want to see if it says the size of it. Right. Can, can you uh, allow Lloyd to share? He's got a yes. street view. Just want to show you what's going on there because, like I said, there's a lot of um, a lot of stuff going on. That's what's happening at that corner. It's pretty organized. You see it now? Okay. Oh, I see. It uh, would go to the inverter would go to the left of that panel. Yeah. Over above by the uh, central air unit, it would be located on that wall. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, and it would follow that conduit line that's already there. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we would tie, they would tie everything into that side, and then the inverter would be the left of that disconnect. Okay. All right. So makes uh, sense given the equipment that's already there. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, the, uh, the, the motion that we're looking at is to approve as modified because I'm going to have to add the fact that uh, the electrical lines and the inverter are mounted on that corner. So that'll be something that I'll add to the application. So do I have a motion to approve that application? I think to approve it as modified. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, five zero. Okay, Josh. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your application's approved. Thank you very much. Do now, do I just have to follow up with the billing department next week? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll prepare um, the certificate of appropriateness, which would have the information, uh, and I will uh, email that to you and uh, to the building inspector at the same time. 
Um, so she'll have that. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and proceed with your, uh, because I, I would assume that you, this was part of a application that you already submitted, right? Yes. Yeah. And they told me we had to come between the, or in front of the HRB first. Yeah. Okay. So I think, that, you know, she can probably uh, tell you what, uh, what else you need to do in order to get the permit. Okay. Perfect. I appreciate it guys. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Bye. C of A. Okay. Workshop. We have Mr. Thompson. Good evening, Ooh. everyone. Good evening, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello. Good to be back in front of the board again. We're, um, we're here tonight to present the other two lots, lot number one and two. Uh, single family homes in the Butterfield de development that uh, um, would accompany the Sherman res residence currently under construction that we reviewed with the board this past summer. Okay. Uh, Let's take a look. I guess maybe may make sense to start. I could show the, the site plan just for reference and then maybe start with um, what the prior approval was and, and what we're proposing, which is fairly true to that with some minor alterations. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Yep. So the, the two lots highlighted in red are lots number one and two. The lot highlighted now is lot number three, which was the, the recent approval for the Sherman residence. Um, so essentially we're, we're seeking a review and approval for the, the other two remaining lots to complete the development. The Prior approved plans. Let's see, let's pull these up here. Included three homes. Um, the the center lot highlighted is probably the most consistent to the the Sherman residence that was actually built on the the left side lot closest to Route 9. And then we'd be seeking to create the other two residents on the right, which would emulate you know, the original lot three proposal and also the original lot one proposal in place. So what I created as a diagram to show all three in context with each other is an elevation of the three. And then I can also approach this however the board would like, one house at a, at a time and complete or um, you know, the drawings for both simultaneously to, to compare and contrast um, what we're proposing to what the original was. Maybe starting with lot one. Do you have an elevation like this to of what was originally proposed of all three like that? I know you showed a, a sort of a... Um, I suppose the closest I have is the okay. is the rendering mm -hmm. of that. And then for each house, we do have um, elevations transposed one on top of the other, the, the proposed elevation for the house and what the original approved elevation was. I could put all three of those up side by side if that's, if that's helpful. I'm fine. Okay. I don't know what other people think, but I'm, I think I'm okay. Well, I, I, am I correct? Because, you know, what we're looking at now is really the, um, the your, your proposed elevation on top and the one below is the, what was approved as part of the overall approval. Am I correct? Exactly right, yes. But that's only partially correct I think I'm sorry it's it's what was approved for lot number for the Sherman's lot no yeah go back to the rendering that is that is true so the they are the the aesthetic of the house is comparable but the lot were were changed I'll, I'll pull that up so the the Sherman house was most consistent with what I'll call the colonial revival style house here in the center 
and was actually constructed on lot number three, which is mm -hmm. the closest to Route 9W. So I guess that's I'm get, what I'm getting at here is that that uh, there's a certain level of consistency that's been reintroduced into this that was thought out to be uh, varied with with the uh, garages mirrored, uh, and we're back to three houses in a row with three driveways in a row, exact same side, and two of them almost look the same. So that's, I've just cut to the chase. That's what I'm getting at, uh, getting to and noticing and um, having a little issue with. Right, the Sherman residence was, um, was, uh, was moved over so that the rooms would overlook the parts, you know, so that the, the bedrooms and the kitchen and everything would overlook the park. Yeah, which is great. And it looks wonderful up there like that now. Um, and they moved the garage to the other side of the house, correct? Yeah. No, they didn't necessarily move the garage. They basically oh. just took that middle house with the single gable in the front and moved, right, right. Back, moved the whole house. And then, but rather than swap house, you know, one and two or left and middle as shown here, that it sounds like the proposal is to have the garage, all of the garages will end up essentially being on the right side of the okay. house. Yeah, so okay, I remember this now. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Is there a reason why the garage can't stay on the left side as it is in the in the drawing? I know the curb cuts have been engineered that way. It's it's definitely something we can follow up with the civil engineer and see if that's a possibility. Um, let me just pull up our site plans. They're part of our drawing package. See if I can see anything here. But it's it's something we definitely. Um, could Quick see question: Are the curb cuts determined by the zoning board? Do we know that, um, Joe? You'd probably know that better than most. The curb cuts would have been approved as part of the, the planning process. Okay. Whether or not a, a change would require that that approval be revisited or not, offhand, I I don't know. Um, right. But we could. But we obviously, could have, they were able to change it for the Sherman residence, so it can't be the most difficult thing in the world. Okay. I, I think that's right. Yeah. A little, re little, re little civil re-engineering, that's all. Drainage mostly, right? And yeah, yeah that's kind of what I was wondering. Like, how difficult is it to change you know, the curb cut? Well, it, it, it's just a question of changing the curb. Right, right. And if the two slots are going to be, you know, build a uh, construction site at the same time, it'll probably be easier. Yeah, um, I just didn't know if it would be impacted um, by the fact that this is a, you know, total development site as opposed to your typical you know, residential singular a lot. That's where my question was coming from. I don't, I don't know that we're gonna have a, a, a solid answer on that tonight, but just looking at these yeah. quickly here, uh, I don't foresee any issues. Okay. Uh, I don't see, you know, I know one of the issues with the, the Sherman lot is we had a utility pole we had to contend with, and I, I don't see that as being a, an issue for either of these two lots, so. Um, that may be a possibility. They're pretty level too. It's not like you have a big drop off on one side versus the other. So, correct. They they do slope back, so we actually we were able to accomplish walkout basements on both of them. But right, right. They point um, you know across the lot, they're pretty consistent. Yeah, across the front, across um, the street frontage. Can we take a look at uh, the three elevations that you're proposing? Well, I mean, one is being built, but the other two elevations that are being proposed. Okay. So essentially, I guess uh, the big difference between two and three, two being in the middle, three being to the right, uh, is whether or not it's got a gable over the garage. There's that, there's the pitch. The pitch is different on the dormers and there's the arched windows and some of the detailing is yeah. different also. But I mean, the, the, the basic construction is pretty much the same. Yeah, the floor plans are- Floor plans are identical, I think. 
That's exactly right, is the, the footprint of the house, they're identical to each other. The, uh, the differences are, are subtle in the details because the overall compositions are so similar. Roof pitch, uh, single columns versus double columns on the porch. The, uh, the lot one house has some brackets on the porch and brackets on the garage, but uh, no gable over the garage, whereas lot two offers a gable over the garage, similar to the, the Sherman residence. And um, again, very, very consistent with each other, but you know, it's, it's subtle differences. Um, you know, four I think one of the, the sorry, Joe, not to cut you off. I think okay. one of the um, things also to keep in mind too, is that by making the accommodation that we did with the Sherman residence 65, if you can go back to the concept drawing from Ray Sullivan, you'll see that the, um, the, in the original sort of rhythm of the houses, there were two things that were distinct. One is that you didn't have it, it. This is the only way that you can lay these houses out where you don't have two garages abutting each other. And you also didn't have garage, house, garage, house, garage, house. And also the house in the center had the single gable and then it was flanked by the two with the double gables. So we've already kind of broken up this, you know, this proposed rhythm um, for a good reason, I think. I mean, I think that the house on the corner is shaping out nicely. Um, but I guess my question would be, is it possible to reverse this original proposal and have a double gabled house in the center and per perhaps a single gabled house on the far side? Is that how much is the, how much of the roof affects the floor plan on the second floor? It would have some impact. It's certainly something we'd have to review with the property owner. Um, right. But, um, wouldn't necessarily say that we, we couldn't consider that. Okay. Are these houses being built like on spec? They are. Okay, so they haven't been it's sold. It's a so. greater possibility. Right, okay. So I, I think just looking at kind of big picture things, that would be something that I would want to see explored. Um, and I also would want to see what it would look like with the, with the garage pattern alternating. I don't, I wasn't opposed to the two garages abutting each other. I don't see why that would necessarily have been a problem, but I know that that was something that, you know, came up originally, but um, I think that's going to give you another way of having them seem a little bit more distinct and a little bit less um, repetitious. Offhand, I don't believe that would pose any issues. So it's, it's definitely something right. we can discuss and explore and come back to the board. Yeah, Al, do you recall that being a big issue in the original discussion of the garages? Uh, no, it, it never really got to um, that level of detail. I think that, um, you know, what we were looking at to a large extent was, was really this rendering and, and the final uh, submission and uh, the fact that the, there was enough variety yet uh, consistency in the styling and the details uh, that it, it, it pulled the three buildings together uh, in a sympathetic um, overall uh, design. So I think that that's, um, uh, I, I think that what you're proposing probably, uh, or, or uh, to me, would uh, bring it closer to that in that um, I, I think what Joe was, was proposing to us originally may be a little bit too um, identical or too close. Uh, I mean, uh, I think that the two uh, buildings, two and three, just aside from uh, some detailing, really looked like it was uh, the same building. Mm. And it would be nice if, if it was a, there was a little bit more variety to it. Um, I mean, otherwise, uh, you know, we're 
I know it's not exactly, and it's a little derogatory, but you know, it starts looking like Levittown where, you know, it's the same model, but you know, do you want it blue or red, but otherwise it's identical. So I think that um, it's not that bad, but I, I, I think that a little bit more variety in these three buildings would uh, help all of them. I yeah. think something else too is that to, to keep in mind is that the the double the single gable style is much more common around the village in our historic architecture. The double gable is there's some examples, but it's just not as um, it's not as common a, a sort of building design in in the history of the village. I, I too would like to see more um, variety. I like the single gable more too. Um, I, that's a good point though, that is more common. I'm, I'm more concerned about that than the, the repetitiveness of the garages because um, you're never gonna get back from it like this view. You're gonna be, I mean, you're, I guess you're gonna sense that rhythm as you drive or walk mm -hmm. by. So I can go back and forth there. Um, as for them, looking the same I mean I there are instances even of buildings built a hundred years ago that are the same I'm thinking about the two on yeah uh, on, on Garden Street point. The, like next to each other they're mirrors I mean there There's are it. there are all kinds of copycats but right. yeah. um, it'd be nice to avoid that even walking down Parrot Street today um I noticed that almost there's been a lot of little infills and, and obvious you know uh, modifications over the many years that those houses were built there but if you walk down parrot street um and joe you're not going to be familiar with this i'm just talking to my board sorry um every single house is the same right yeah. there yeah. have been modifications but they really were I, I don't know if it was worker housing or what the story is there but uh, i mean they all have these like this very um particular design where there's kind of an overhang, there are front columns, they're very narrow, very kind of gothic, um, you know, yeah, they, I mean, they're almost identical when you really take a good look at them, it, and it, it's fascinating. Well, the thing is, is that the village grew in spurts, and so, right. you know, the, there were instances where, um, you know, people hired an architect, and he cranked out Yep. three or four designs that were pretty uh, you know pretty close to each other and mm -hmm. um sort of the the economic logic of of the levittown so but can, right. can we take a look at, at yeah at what you're proposing and we can uh specifically address the elevations that we're dealing with right now and joe i also i'm sorry i didn't introduce you to todd who is the newest member of our board he was, he has joined since the last time we spoke to you. Kathleen Foley is now a village trustee. Welcome Todd, good to see you again. Yep, we're actually uh, somewhat acquainted. Oh, okay. How could you not be familiar with all the great work uh, being from Peekskill? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, no steel windows on this house. <laughs> so I guess to start with house to house, and, and I don't disagree with anything the board's said thus far, so uh, I'd be happy to take that back to ownership review, and, and um, I do understand that as an overall composition, it may make more sense to um, uh, break away from the double gable, come back to a single, um, to, to avoid that repetition, and maybe integrate some of the elements from one or the other facade into it, possibly, so we can, um, we can have those discussions and, and then come back to the board, possibly with a revised proposal. All right. Um, I guess to review the, the details of each one, I can pull up lot one, start there, and then. Uh, no, I, 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 what I would rather that we look at is take a look at the three proposed elevations, you know, uh, on one sheet. That is, yeah, that's what was originally designed, right? But I think that's the one. Yep. So right. because the third one is off to the left. Correct. Okay. Right. So I, I guess in this particular situation, if we were to have our way, we'd want uh, building three to have the single dormer. 
One on the right, yeah. I believe. All right. Yeah. I think it's they're actually calling that lot one now, but okay. Well, yeah, but I understand. Well, okay, mean. Joe. Yeah, I, let, let let let's let Joe tell us which one, the one that you're drawing the dormer on. Uh, yeah. is that one or two? one two? One. Sorry, that's a little small. Maybe that is that is lot one okay. sixty sixty. Maybe better to refer to them by address sixty one Balding sixty mm -hmm. sixty five Balding. That might be clearer. And 65, lot three being the Shermans, which is which is yeah. under construction. So I would just say we're going to explore swapping the garages on one of the two houses to be built. I feel like it might make more sense for lot one to have the garage swapped. I'm thinking the interiors layout of the room, um, you know, bedrooms upstairs facing each other uh, versus having, you know, facing a garage or facing the lot line. Does that make sense? Yeah, you don't have bedrooms. If you swap lot one the garage, at least you don't have upstairs bedrooms kind of looking directly at each other for, for yeah. lots. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I'd agree with that. If we if we do change one of them, that order. Yeah. that's the one to, to the, the ideal one, probably. The only thing I might be a little concerned with is if you have the two driveways in such close proximity to each other, with our, our setbacks, it'd be about 20 foot of green space between the two of them. Like, I guess they're not right on top of each other, but um, that's the only thing that maybe gives some consideration is that you have you know, two um, paved surfaces. Fairly well, yeah, let me ask uh, the board members. I mean, my personal feeling is I, I really uh, um, the I, I to me the location of the garages is not that important, uh, and so I, let me throw it out to the other board members uh, if to see if people have a strong feeling or a preference one way or another? Um, I have a preference to, okay, so I'm just thinking about the rest, and this is just completely practical, very boring point I'm about to make, but um, I can't think of another place in the village where, yes, we see examples as Lloyd raised, um, where we have examples of repetition that are interesting. It shows the kind of, um, layers of history of the district where we've had little boom periods and housing was built repetitiously um, for a reason. Um, but in this case, there's no reason to have the garages kind of all line up um, so predictably uh, with every garage being, you know, as you face it to the right of the house. Um, I just, you know, without having any precedent of, of that in the village, um, oh, yeah. to be complete, to be completely crude, um, it, it just, you know, it looks like really Westchester. I just feel like we have enough variation in, within the district that, you know, we're, we're kind of compelled to, um, show a little variety here. Um, that's just, you know my first thought yeah we really don't have, we don't have many garages and and driveways either that's so. the problem i don't have a precedent to work off of but i don't know if i'm wrong about that because these buildings are of their time they are of their period and i don't want to disrespect that either okay um I, Boyd? I'd, I'd rather see the variation um i like the roofline variation ideas i agree that Flipping lot one is probably preferable because you mm -hmm. will avoid the um, proximity of neighbors and rooms looking mm -hmm. into each other. Um, and yeah, I like the, the the variety. I mean, I think you are going to feel like boom, boom, boom. These three driveways, three garages. Um, if they're in the same location, then it's going to feel much more. Um, yeah, feel to me much more. Um, yeah, that's already better. Oh, yeah, that's already. Yeah, 
And one of them with that with nothing above one of them with nothing above the garage would even take it a little one step further and a different entry treatment. And you got nice right. similarities that hook them all together and materials, I imagine. We haven't even got into that, but that hook them all together too. And presumably the colors, which we can't talk about. But um, yeah, I think that's to me that's feeling nicer. To okay. latch on to what Lloyd is saying um, about the garages, thank you, Joe, for rendering that so quickly. Yeah, um, I think that's already a great improvement. Um, my only concern is that with all the garages matching with the door, you know, with the um, door. yeah, um, it's starting to look like a condo association. Um, Which that's is what about eliminating? warmers on over the garage on the far right yeah uh, please just one i mean <laughs> uh, I think that would be a good solution yeah changing the garage door style to, to a no, no glass or something might in one of them could kind of disrupt the the sameness of the three maybe right yeah or, yeah you know not exactly this but sure have a, a different yeah. garage door and I think something else to keep in mind as well is that on the far left side, uh, or the far right side rather, of the whole strip, there is a public right of way to get mm -hmm. into the rest of Butterfield. So for having having it be on. Uh, essentially the, that house on the corner is going to end up with kind of two, not two primary facades, but two very visible facades. Um, and it'll be, I think, more hospitable than the, yeah. the wide wall of a garage along that pathway. Um, Similar yeah. to what was done next to the park, right? So rather than having the garage next to the park and visible. Right, exactly, exactly. Same logic. I'm with you there too. And I, and I think that the homeowners would probably feel more comfortable having a little bit more visibility along that public path than, you know, have the, the garage separating them from it. Yeah. I like to know what it right? the utility, the, the services are kind of, uh, you know, uh, where people will put their trash cans and bicycles and everything else like that. They'll also be sort of in the middle between the two mm -hmm. buildings rather than hanging off the end in that. Uh, right away. I, I like that too. Small consideration. Joe, would it be possible to incorporate um, those arched windows into the yeah. one on the far right? I think that makes sense. That's um, that's what was going through my mind when I, when I said before, if we, um, one of the houses, let's say we do keep the, yeah. the design in the center, if we eliminate the other, maybe we bring some of those elements into it, like the arches, exactly. Yeah. So that way, um, That'll start to talk to right. one of the, the okay. neighbor. Sorry. Yeah. Good start, idea. That'll start to talk to the neighbor building across the street too, which has a couple of nice arches. Um, on Pelding Ave, the um, one of the uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Alex Grone's house. That one is that what you're thinking of, Lloyd? I don't know the names. Like you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry. We keep exactly. referring to people by name. It's a. Big it's mistake. got the double arches over the doorway. They're very it's close. John, it was John Cronin's house, but it's not any longer. It's the one between. Oh. Um, it's between Fifty Six and the little the little gray house next to Downey. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. They have two tight. I can I can send you a picture. They have these two tight arched windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. They're they're. they're quite narrow and quite, they're not as... Um, Again, lost. small town, I didn't know that he had moved. So I was actually referring to a completely different house on that street. But yes, there are examples of arched windows on that street, so. Yeah, I think we may have even put them in the research folder from when we were looking at this with the Shermans. But um, yeah, it's, they're these yes. nice, tight little mm -hmm. narrow windows with rounded caps on yep. them. Yep. Like that there, yeah. Question for the board. Yeah. Yeah. We do end up heading down this path where we only pursue one of the double gabled houses. Is there a preference for one over the other to retain? I personally like all that sort of intricate um, gingerbread and I like the arches somewhere too, but I think the arches go better with that than with the more sort of, eh, more sort of farmhouse looking style on the right. 
Yeah, I mean, Paul de Nav, um, yeah. I agree with Lloyd, is kind of the mansion row of mm -hmm. the village. And uh, we, there are a few examples I can think of um, on that street with the arched windows rather than the more simple um, rectangular style that you see throughout other places in the village. Um, this is just a very distinct neighborhood. So I would lean more in that direction. I think there's also, there are many examples down the way too of, of well, the arches definitely and the, um, the scroll work. Um, on yep. the Beautiful examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's scroll work throughout the village. Um, some of it is more um, carpenter graphic style and more simple. And then um, we have much more ornate examples on um, paulding yeah yep and the double gable design m makes the the center house seem a little bit more grand so i think that the kind of grander elements can stick with that and the more st streamlined elements could mm -hmm. could go on to the to the single gable just by i mean i know that they are almost identical in size but there's just something about the two gables that makes it seem uh Bigger. a little more castle <laughs> a little more fortress-like. Well, it's more formal. It's, it, yeah. you know, it's, it's um, more construction. It looks more expensive, you know. Joe, what's your, uh, I, I mean, looking out the window, I can tell that you're not digging a foundation next week. So what's your kind of timeline for, um, you know, for these, for these two? What I believe is they'll likely want to start when the ground thaws, which is usually late March, early April. So okay. uh, that gives us a fair amount of time here, actually. Yeah. Okay. And you've you've okay. submitted them as two separate applications, um, which makes sense, obviously, because they're two separate buildings. But as far as the, you know, we're going to have the public, we're going to have to have a public hearing for them. We can do a lot of those things sort of in concert. Um, but what is there, I mean, should we be considering them as a, as a pair in the sense that we, we will, we should expect that they'll be built, you know, kind of around the same time and everything. Correct. The idea would be that, um, when we start one, we'd immediately start the other right after. So excavator moves from one site to the next Mason from one site to the next. So they, uh, likely would finish within two weeks of each other. Sorry, I finished within two weeks of each other. All right, so there's so there wouldn't really be any reason to be concerned that one of them may come back with a radically different design or program or anything like that. The only thing I could imagine is if that somebody wanted to purchase um, directly um, between now and the time we start and wanted to make some alterations. Um, that's the only thing I could, I could imagine would drive that. And obviously if that, that did happen, we'd be back before the board with whatever those proposed changes were, but we're not anticipating that at this time. Okay. That's good. Um, should we, to, should we talk about the proposed material palette just to give you some feedback on that? Yeah, absolutely. I can pull up the, the specs and go through one by one if that's preferable. Um, I, is it going to vary from uh, from uh, lot three? From the Sherman's? Yeah. Only in that, um, I think the only change we're really proposing, aside from the front doors, um, which are different styles, um, is that we're proposing to what I think the board will likely, hopefully, perceive as an upgrade, change the windows from Jeldwin to Marvin. I, see, I noticed that, yeah which would be instead of a vinyl clad and aluminum clad. And actually Marvin offers more profiles on the grills, which I remember came up as an issue where we have the ability to uh, increase from what Jeldwin had offered was a maximum of seven eighths of an inch on the profile of the grills up to an inch and an eighth if we'd like to uh, make them a little heavier, a little more prominent. Right, they look a little more residential in nature, which I think was the, you know, the thing that we struggled with the last time was that they looked a little too similar to the, um, you know, condos that were built elsewhere on the Butterfield site, as I recall. I'm correct about that. But I have to say, Joe, the change in color made such a huge difference between mm -hmm. the residential building, I mean, 
I shouldn't say residential, the, the single family building and the multifamily building that really, um, I, I think it made, it made such a big difference and it, it really made it distinct. So all of yeah. my concerns about the windows were, a lot of them were um, assuaged by that. I don't know if that was your decision or Kristen's or whomever it was, but it was uh, a good choice. I agree. Yeah, I do too. And I think that the proportions are working out nicely. I, I yeah. look at other houses on the street that are newer that have kind of squat square windows. You, you've got nice sort of uh, traditional proportions. I, I'm just saying it's, it's working well. Thank you. Like yeah, we're that turning out as well, but I, I don't want to disappoint on the color. That is um, oh. currently, at least the last time I've drove by, I don't think they're too much further. That's um, that's a primer that's uh, pre-primed on the cedar. The Are we talking about the windows or the siding? Siding. Uh, he's talking. I think everybody was saying they love the black windows. Oh, the black windows. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. Right. I was saying that the black the black windows were they, it makes it so much more distinct than the white or cream windows that were on the multifamily building behind it. Oh, good. Okay. I thought, I thought you meant yeah. it. <laughs> it reads a lot less as vinyl. It, it was a good choice. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, it's funny that you mentioned the, the siding color, though, because Andrea and I, a couple of days ago, were trying to figure out if they had tried to pre-paint it or something before it was being installed, because it's a color I, I've, I've never seen un, un, unpainted wood going up that color, you know, primed wood. It's, it's such a dark yellow, but... Don't worry, you'll never see it again in about another moment. Okay. <laughs> Not our purview. <laughs> I, did, I, I didn't think it was a. I didn't think it was a bad color. I just. I. I haven't seen anything like that before. Sorry, I've, Joe. We're just uh, all stuck at home, and um, it's a very small um, village, and it, it's on my jogging route. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I'd like to move it along because I, I. I actually have some other stuff I have to get to. So, um, have we given you good information or good feedback, Joe, that you can move to the next step? Yes. Um, and, and as I mentioned, I don't disagree with any of the suggestions, but I think they all potentially could have value. So at this point, I'll go back, have some conversations with ownership, and um, we'll, we'll come back to the board with potentially a revised proposal. Um, can't necessarily commit to anything tonight, but um, we can certainly discuss everything that's been presented. And that we've reviewed, and um, again, I can I can see the merit in a lot of it. Okay, good, great. Well, we're meeting again in two weeks. If you have anything to talk about then, or otherwise, we can see you in March. With the the next meeting is, since some of these changes would be pretty substantial, is there um, a certain amount of time that the board would need to see the revised proposal in advance to that meeting? Um, well, it'll st it, you'll still be in workshop until we are. You know, because like I said, we will have to do the public hearing. So, if if it's for a workshop consideration, the 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 earlier we see it, the better, obviously. But you can present it during the workshop. That's that's fine. Perfect. That should be plenty of time to to be ready for it then. Um, and then we would want to, yeah. So we would we would need to have. Uh, oh, well, we have an application. You did submit an application. Yes. Okay. So we yeah, could, and we have a referral, right? We have a referral. We have an application. So we could consider the next meeting to be a workshop. Um, however, if you have crossed every uh, T and dotted every I from that, we could vote to go to a public hearing because it is because we do have the application. So. Um, but don't worry about getting them to us the Friday before because it's it's still considered an informal workshop. Makes perfect sense. Okay. okay. Thank you very All much. Right. Thank you, John. In two weeks. All right. Forward to it. Have a good evening. Thank Thanks. You. Okay. Um, next on the agenda, the minutes. Yes. Okay. So. I'm going to open up the minutes, I think. Nope, not that. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So I have a question. Did we, I, I see in our folder that we still have the 113 minutes hmm. um, and the 12 nine minutes were still in the drafts folder. Did we, did we, didn't we approve those during our meeting? Hold on, I can tell you. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, so at the 119 meeting, we approved 113, 40. Todd wasn't. Right. Yeah, 113. Um, and what was the other one? And 129. Yeah, I think they just are. 129. Yeah. No, we approved those. Uh, Sean, you moved to accept the minutes. I seconded. It was 3-0, Todd abstained because he was not a board member and I don't know who the other person, but they were approved. Okay, was, so those just didn't get moved. That was gone, that meeting. They just didn't get moved into the- Yeah. Uh, oh, next. okay, maybe Lloyd wasn't at that meeting. That's that's probably what it was. Lloyd was not at that meeting on the right. 19th. Got it, yep. Okay, so in our approved folder- I sent you my comments separately. Right. Right, okay, so folder, yeah, those were approved. There's three, there are now three minutes for approval. And tonight we are going to be looking at, um, we can look at 119 mm -hmm. and 127. Uh, we can't do 131 or 207 because I haven't finished them. That's so, fine. Yeah, sorry, Sean. I just dropped the ball okay. on that. I didn't think about it. So let's look at... Um, 119. 119. Yeah, that was an additional voting session. Oh yeah, so these I just did. This is this is just for the <laughs> this was for the meeting to approve the minutes. Yeah. Oh god, we did that, didn't we? <laughs> we did do that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And these are all this is all correct. I updated all of this stuff. So those are the yeah. first votes. Okay, so 129 uh, um, okay. Uh, I, I think Sean, you mentioned earlier today, you wanted to know what the votes were. I got it. I I, I found it. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are so these are well, according to my notes. Right. This I'm is looking them over. And uh, you are accurate. Yes. And we ended at eight oh two. Yes, we did. Eight oh two so is exactly what I wrote. I will make a motion to accept the minute as submitted from uh, 119. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And Lloyd abstaining? No, I, I said aye. Oh, but you weren't at the meeting, Lloyd. You said <laughs> I wasn't at? Oh, okay, sure, I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> so four zero Lloyd abstain. Right. We did incorporate your notes, but you just weren't yeah. there. Okay, okay, so now this is the 127, um, which was, I was not there, so I can't vote on these. Uh, okay, so 127, I'm looking over my notes. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I've got to change. Okay. Uh, the line that is half obscured at the top. Okay. Um, that the uh, that may require variance in what we say uh, that the referral states noted, noted that, that the ref the referral oh. sorry that the referral states that the proposed work may require uh, that's the rest of it's right okay which I think ultimately has turned out to be a mistake and right. not everything is square. right well that's why i decided to proceed with it and 
even though we, you know, we, we don't like to do that. But... Right. I'm still here. I'll be right back. I need a quick second. Okay. Sean, just, I'm recording this. Um, you said you're abstaining from re voting on these minutes because you weren't present. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, do I have a motion concerning these minutes? Uh, we should just wait for Lloyd to come back because okay. he needs to vote. Okay, and so we don't have uh, 131. Uh, no, I just need to, I, okay. I, I just need the times that we started and adjourned. I mean, they're almost done, but we can just do them next time. They're just the minutes for our two, um, editing sessions that we had, but I, my notes are. Okay. While we're waiting for Lloyd to come back, um, let me, oh, maybe this is it. Oh. let me raise, uh, the question. I, I um, because I know we're going to get into discussion about um, the the map as well as um, you know what we um, are going to have uh, Jen and Hannah work on. Um, Me. Let, Jen's not doing it. Andrea's doing it. Jen's not doing it. Okay. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this since Lloyd's back. Lloyd, any any comments concerning these minutes? You're muted, Lloyd. <clears throat> no. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, okay. Do I have a motion to approve these minutes? I'll move to approve. Do I have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 So these are um, approved. These are, uh, Lloyd, you move to approve these as amended? Well, uh, no, as they're here. We don't have to say that they're amended because we're doing it live. So live. I, I know that's what, that's where I get confused. Okay. So we just approved them. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. So you're, uh, your question about the, or your statement about the map. Um. Well, I, I, you know, what we had talked about before was um, uh, trying to get as many of our uh, buildings in the district on Chris as mm -hmm. possible. And uh, I know that um, last time Andrea had some reservations or, you know, there were some possible second thoughts about this uh, and i was wondering if you were able to uh, investigate it further and how do you feel about it now um so i kind of got into this with lloyd a little bit um you know um i i hope i'm not repeating myself to you al um but uh it, it's like it seemed so organized when I um, attended the uh, Virtual Landmark Society's conference on this particular, you know, on, on the Chris Trekker app. And um, once I got into the weeds and started trying to actually download the application, I'm running into all kinds of roadblocks. Um, it's a little more disorganized than I would have expected. Um, it's not that it's not doable. It's just that um, I keep kind of communicating with various bureaucrats within SHPO and um, I'm not getting very clear answers on how to get this up and running. I'm sure it's possible because other municipalities have been doing this for a long time. Um, so um, once I kind of get myself organized, uh, I, I think you're, once I get the app on my phone, um, I think the idea 
was that Hannah and I would work together to start just taking pictures, you know, not uploading information, right? Was that yeah, yeah. the purview? Which um, well, I was going to suggest something different from that. Sure. Can I say, um, I, you know, I haven't put the app on my phone either, Ugh. but um, I emailed them one day. I heard back within a day or two, like, okay, yeah, we. I hear back quickly, but it's not useful information. Well, That's I haven't the... asked questions. All I was asking for was. Um, yeah. Access. I was looking for better direction because their website's a little bit of a scramble to get through. Um, you know, I'm, yeah. like I said, I'm confident. I have to take a day of my life to just walk my way through it yeah, and, it's and get system. It's just, uh, it's, it's, um, sorry to interrupt there. I, no, no, no. Go what ahead. Is that it's, um, I think it's pretty robust and it has a lot of features and therefore it's confusing. That's the thing. And, and, and I'm, you know, um, a little bit of a light. I, <laughs> and no, so, that, but... you know, well, I, I'm struggling. <laughs> Okay, well, he, here is my thought, because I know that the last time we, what we were talking about is coming up with a, um, a format, which we will use, take uh, information that we have from the um, Fisher Larson survey mm -hmm. and uh, combine it with anything, you know, with whatever else we want to uh, note as and and then attach a bunch of photographs now the the question that i had that it, it sort of dawned on me is that we have for example we just finished reviewing new structures now do they have any problem with us uploading on chris paulding avenue okay so the way they've designed it although i'm having trouble getting it actually on my phone um, which actually maybe, hey, Hannah is way younger than me. Maybe she'll be really useful yeah. <laughs> technology front. But um, so, so this application is designed in a way where um, the, the first course of action is actually not uploading um, the kind of nitty gritty information. It's actually just, if you look at the other, you know, if you go on the website and, and you look at the other municipalities, um, I was really surprised to see uh, robust information in a lot of like the Rust Belt kind of areas of upstate New York, um, places like Ithaca and Syracuse and, um, you know, bigger municipalities like that. They have a lot of their structures inventoried on Chris and really all it is, is first they take a picture of the structure as it presently exists. Then they begin building on that information so it's literally just a snapshot of the structure as it exists right now, you know, as you're walking around town. That was how they designed this thing. Um, so to um, add the, um, you know, the, what is, I'm forgetting, the, the uh, Larson Fisher would even be uh, kind of the second step. The first step would really just be to get an image online on, on the database. But I have to add, so that yeah, I think that's that's definitely the first step, and it's easy, and anybody can do it, and we should just yeah. go ahead and do it because it just gives you a, a snapshot into 2021 of what each property looked like, each one you put on there, and there's what harm is there in that? In my mm -hmm. opinion, that's a great. Just to be but, um, I wanted to say also that the the system already has a lot of the Larson Fisher, whatever it's called. Oh um, really? Oh. I found stuff on there. It's the blue sheets. Yeah, they look like no, no blue grass. sheets. No blue sheets are uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Fitch. F uh, yeah, Marston. Marston Fitch. John Marston Fitch. That's different. Okay. Yeah. I thought that, that was the same. That, that that was in seventy six. Yeah, I found. Right. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, whereas no, Larson Fisher there. was was in the nineteen eighties uh, or nineties or something like that. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Be, be, well, the thing is, is that um, that that was what uh, I was a little bit concerned. If if they don't really uh, care if we put up uh, a building that was built last year on Chris, 
then you know as far as i'm concerned i think that that's then that's how we do it uh what we can uh probably do is um is let's get the photographs up uh and get at least the entry started and then what we what my thought was is that we come up with a format of information and and this is our review of Larson Fisher and any other information that we happen to have, which could be uh, the survey information from, uh, you know, Dr. Fitch's survey. But I, I have that in hard uh, copy also, so uh, we don't have to, well, actually, I, I take it back because uh, the report that I have is not as detailed as those blue sheets that uh, are obviously on Chris. Um, so, you know, what we can do is take that information, combine it and, and come up with what the, the board's official interpretation or uh, official uh, view as far as each individual building within our district. Right? And, you know, what I, what I was proposing, and I don't know if I actually already have uh, stated this, I, I think that uh, the way to do it is to come up with a format and then, you know, what we can do is maybe at each meeting, maybe have about four or five buildings that we go through and, uh, and you know, and just review. And then once we all pretty much agree that uh, the information is correct, we can, uh, you know, have somebody upload it to Chris. Um, yeah, uh, well, just in terms of just talking about working with Hannah, um, so this, this app is, is kind of its own, um, you know, uh, kind of breakaway. So the tracker app that you have on your phone from Shippo, um, it, it, it just allows you to just, uh, you know, I would say aggressively document, just get pictures of the entire, ideally, the entire inventory of your municipality, of your of your district, your historic district. So for us, that's pretty small, but that's actually a lot of structures. And yeah, so I what I would like to do, so basically what the Trekker app allows you to do is to kind of lay a, um, um, a foundation on which you build everything else, all the other information. Um, and like I said, I was really surprised to see how other uh, districts, how robust their information was. Um, and we are just literally not on the map except for the Campbell estate because we did that. I think Sean, you uploaded that information, <laughs> Chris. Um, so the Trekker app is um, kind of a, just a branch of this whole effort. And so the Trekker app um, just allows you to snap photos of the entire inventory of your district, um, just present day photos. And then from there, you can keep adding information. So I think for um, Hannah and myself, um, it would be a uh, really good project uh, to just start that, you know, foundation of information where we just have a snapshot after snapshot of everything in our district inventory, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I okay. think that, Al, I think that um, I what Andrea is getting at is that, um, like, if you go on Chris now, there's, and if you look up an address where there isn't something already posted, I was trying to look at the fence on Kemble Street, who, or Kemble Avenue, who were um, John uh, Allison's fence. There, there's nothing to, if there isn't something there, then there isn't like a placeholder for that address. So I think if we can combine these two ideas where if Andrea can just focus on getting a contemporary photo and the address identified, I, then that will give us something to latch onto where we can add more research on an address by address basis as it becomes synthesized. I, I, well, I, I agree. I, I have no, no objection to it. I, I think that's a good idea. Let, let's go ahead. You know, the hardest part is getting over the inertia of starting from point zero right. moving forward. So let's go ahead and move forward. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, we have the, the Larson Fisher survey, which is, you know, it is in an, uh, an Excel format and we can add a column and, you know, have a check mark for, you know, 
having uploaded something. And I think that's the way we track it. In Got other it. words. And, uh, and can I ask within the app, do you know, are you actually within the app taking a photo and it's being uploaded to the app in, in real time? Yeah. So somebody has to approve it, I believe. But it's, so yeah. Have, okay. Because I, I just thought if you were taking, if we were photographing all these structures, it would also make sense to have on our Google Drive images of all of the structures. But if you're doing it within the app, that makes it's it already creates it, it creates it so Todd to answer your question it creates a ready-made record so we don't have to basically we don't have to do our own record keeping the shippo does it for us which is great um uh and um yeah it, 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 my only hitch is just figuring out they have like a few different you know you have to download like a map app and like it, just the technology, I'm kind of experiencing a few hitches where I just, like I said, I just need to take a day to kind of work my way through it. Once I have it on my phone and um, either Hannah can walk herself or walk me through it and we can walk through it together, um, we can just start, you know, inventorying the town as it exists, the district as it exists right now in the 21st century. Um, and then, you know, build from there. However, this board decides to proceed from then. Um, but what's nice is that um, we don't have to maintain our own, you know, I mean, it's a ready-made uh, system database where we can access all that information from here going forward, God willing. The only thing, okay. I'm, you know, that, that, that's, that's all true. I, I mean, I think that makes sense. There's, there might not be a need to duplicate it, but what I am noticing is that on the map, it shows, does it show? The local district is showing, I think, only the national or state district or whatever. Uh, it's not. Showing. Oh, yeah, I noticed that too, Lloyd. You're right. Oh, I, don't I, don't know know you, I don't know. Oh, if, well, that may be something we have to um, alert. You know, like I said, it's a new, oh. it's it's new technology. So maybe we have to tell SHPO it's not including the entire district. Yeah. No, well, no, no, wait a minute. Because if it's showing only one district, uh, then basically what it would show it would be what was sent up with the enabling legislation, which is the, the, uh, the state and national together. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't catch that. All right. Well, I want to figure that part out, but I still think it's valuable to get the information. Well, I, I, all right. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think that we need to, you know, constantly keep discussing it. I think, you know, it, it really makes sense to use Chris, and let's go ahead and do it. You know, and uh, you know, let's take the first step forward. Now, the only thing as far as photographing. Um, uh, pho photographing buildings, we have a whole bunch of photographs which uh, other people have taken during the Larson Fisher survey. And certainly, you know, we can use that and upload, we should also upload those. So rather than wandering around uh, taking pictures of, of buildings, why don't we use the images that we already have on file? It might be easier within the app though if it's geotagging it to a map, right, Andrea? It's it's going to be way easier to do it. That's yeah. my impression. Um, That's why they want you to use it. Uh, I, think it's I, nice I, to have, I have more information. So the 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 photos that you have in those surveys are thirty four years old now, and then something might be a little different in twenty twenty one. So. Well, and also the way I view this is that this is a resource that the state is giving us, that they're maintaining for us, and that this board can use from here on forth. Yeah. And um, we should have the most up-to-date information I, first. I'll tell you my personal feeling is, is that it's always hardest just to get started. And, uh, you know, I think that we have all of the information that we have should be up on Chris. It includes the photographs, includes Lawrence and Fisher, includes any other information. Ultimately, I think the ideal um, situation would be that uh, we have a lot of information that was part of 
uh, applications that were submitted and approved going back to 1976. There's a lot of information there that should also be uploaded to Chris. Well, so, okay, so- I, let, let, I, let, let me just finish and get the, this thought out. I think that, that let's, let's go ahead and start. And, and my feeling is, is that if, uh, if it's easier for you guys to go around and start photographing, we should have an entry for every single building. All I'm saying is that we have a lot of stuff which we can use to initiate or, or you know, establish that, uh, that folder for each individual building. And uh, I think that the only thing that we need to do is come up with a way of keeping track of which ones we have initiated, which ones we haven't. And what mm -hmm. I'm suggesting is that the Larser Fishing Survey uh, it lists every single property in the district. So let's use that. And that's already on our shared Google Drive. Right. Well, let's right. Use, use, I, that, I, use that spreadsheet and add, and add a column, like you say, to X off when we add that information. We can add another column for the other survey, and we can add another column for a contemporary photo. Right. Or whatever we want to do. It, it has to be we, organized, very organized. I, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm only saying that just as like a, just a start. Um, this app, this application was designed to kind of build your database in, in a certain way where, you know, you start snapping photos of the uh, structures as they presently exist, and then you add. The information okay. so it's not it's not one or the other it's yeah, it's perfect. just both yeah I, I, why don't we do this andrea why don't you tell me what you want from me and i'll go do it this is what i'm saying well no right. I guess, it, okay. why don't I, you and um hannah figure out get the app downloaded figure out kind of do a test and why don't you just yeah. do like high street and locust ridge which yeah is where each of you live and that's then, what we have to do because the app is like and then we'll see once once you have those initial once you've got each building photographed and on there and with its own sort of entry, then yeah. we can look and see how easy it is to add yes. historic information using the desktop version or you know like the the web version because if it it because it really could be quite a quick thing to do if we just had to get an iPhone photo through the app of every building. I mean, you could do that in a couple of days. Yeah. And then after the fact, upload all of this historic stuff that we have. I think- The latter example you just cited is exactly what I want. Um, yeah. I'm just having a really hard time figuring it out because, you know, it's just a government website and it's not perfect and right. it has a few glitches and I'm just trying to like get myself through it. And I, I have not really devoted the time um, I okay. With, um, All right. That did the. I didn't do the Kemble. I didn't do the Twenty the Boulevard. I think Bonnie Franzen did it as part of. Oh, maybe she did. Okay. So I'm sure if you had a. Yeah, you, that makes I, sense. It's all there. An email. Well, did. that and also, for example, the Grove. Uh, you know, that was uh, nominated uh, to the National Register mm -hmm. by uh, I think Shippo. So uh, the the thing, the only thing to. We have confidence in you, Andrea. We know you can do it. Uh, I, it, it just, it's a question of uh, getting familiar enough and, and it may require, you know, venturing out and trying to do it and stumbling around and hopefully Hannah uh, will be tech savvy enough that she'll be able to uh, you know, resolve the, the situations. But I think let's go ahead and do it. Just be aware yeah. of the fact that there probably are already some of the properties on it from uh, Dr. Fitch's survey and as well. Uh, well, as, I, I, I looked, I, it, first of all, Sean's right. I would love to do a test run. Um, I think that's absolutely the way to go. Secondly, um, no, I, I've looked through the database and really only the Campbell estate is there. Um, Cold Spring pretty much doesn't have much to offer um, outside of that. As far as I saw, I might be wrong. Well, um, the Stone Street stuff I sent around was from yeah. there. Huh? The Stone Street stuff I sent around was from there. From Chris? Uh, yeah. The, the oh. last, the, uh, what was their names? Teresa um, and Brent Lagerman. Oh, no, I saw. Yeah. I, I, okay. Um, 
I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mix, 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 I, think, but, I have to uh, find my way around it, I guess. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to find a mixed bag where there's some stuff on there and some not. So, right. um, so you're right. With that, with that we, we have confidence in you, Andrew. We know you can do it. <laughs> we'll talk about it in two weeks. Now, let's, um, can we talk about this map? This yes, map yes. for the um, standards. What were your? Uh, I I looked at the zoning map that you yeah. sent to Lloyd and I, and I think it's very crisp and clear, and I don't have any problems. But what were your reservations? Well, uh, uh, does everybody it wasn't a, it wasn't really reservations. It was some questions as far as the process. Uh, you know, just for everybody else's uh, sake, um, Marie had, uh, Marie Early uh, called me because she wanted to change some things in the text of the village ordinance, and it had to do with the map. And uh, what she said is that basically the way that we had it didn't make the map as part of the ordinance. And so uh, after some, a, a little back and forth, we came up with the language that she was going to change the ordinance to so that the map is in fact uh, part of the ordinance. It's going to be an appendix to the ordinance. So then, you know, uh, she and I started discussing the map itself. And I said, we had a uh, AutoCAD version of the map, which we got from Glenn Watson. And she says, well, the last time I looked at it, it was out of date. Uh, which was correct because there was basically we had the version that was printed um, or that was generated in 1999 when we were doing the last set of standards. So um, she said, well, you know, the, the zoning map, they are going to generate it based on, um, uh, you know, uh, the, she reached out to Putnam, some organization within Putnam County uh, government, whatever, you know, whatever the organization is, and uh, they generated uh, the zoning map. And so I said, okay, I mean, it may be a good idea to um, that it be similar in appearance. Uh, and uh, certainly it should be consistent with the zoning maps as far as the lot sizes and so on. I, I guess the, uh, the only thing which I would be a little bit concerned with is um, that it may not, we would lose a little bit of control over uh, any changes to it, we have to go to these people in order for them to change it because uh, the, what she sent me was a PDF. So it's not uh, a document that we could modify. I, I mean, the theoretically, we could do some photoshops if we wanted to, but realistically, it's something which if there's any change to it, it would have to be done through the same organization that generated the map to begin with. I don't see that as necessarily a, a you know a, a con an argument against it. Uh, it just um, uh, I, I guess it's the organization is across the county from us, whereas before uh, any changes, when you know I can call up Glenn Watson and uh, we can get from him whatever he wanted. The other thing we ever made any changes to the map. No, I have the chat version. They haven't. Oh, no, I, I mean not our map. I mean, uh, I, I guess the the zoning map uh, had for the longest time been something that Glenn Watson did, right? Because he's the local surveyor. He has all of the uh, he you know has all of the files for Phillipstown for all practical purposes. I think that if uh, if Marie is confident that they are able to get us a map that is includes the district and they can outline um, you know the national district versus the local district just so that it's on record and if we can have them print it with the ta you know the tax lot or even the street addresses whichever they can do I mean if she's 
I, I think that she's much more of a stickler for long-term planning and ease of use. So if she's comfortable with it for the zoning map, then I'd be comfortable with it for our map. And if something were to change, and if borders or, uh, you know, borders of the um, district were to change, or if we were to add individual landmarks outside of the district, then we'll just have to have them update it. Well, here's the only thing, and I agree. I, I mean, you know, the longer I thought about it, it, it seems like consistency is a, a ben of a benefit here. Uh, right. And uh, I, I guess uh, I just need to verify that this is all free because we, we certainly don't have a budget to maintain our map. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I guess the, the only point of concern uh, is that the uh, the map that designated the, our district, which includes both the state as well as the national register portions, mm -hmm. uh, was a very simplistic map, and that was one of the reasons why uh, I went to Glenn Watson to produce the map that we had in 1999, um, because basically he was part of the group that. Uh, that organized the historic district and uh, there's a, they, they drew the map assuming that they would wind up having to uh, give up some areas and it turns out that nobody challenged the map hmm. so um, the the uh, the way it was drawn it was pretty crude and that was what was sent up. So um, I, I know that over the years we had some issues where uh, where the district lines uh, ran through the middle of various lots. And so I think that um, what I'll, I'll need to do is find out uh, what they are what they would be basing uh, their information on. So. Okay. The short answer is, okay, let's go down that road and let's start uh, and see if we can get uh, at least them. And, and if I run into any problems, I'll, I'll get back to you guys and, and let you know what the issues are. But I'll ask them what, um, what data they have because um, I'm sure they can just toggle it on and off. So Yeah, I think good. it's because if you've used the eParcel site, which Andrea uses all the time, what, if you get a list of what they can provide, then we can choose what we want on our map. Yeah. And it'll match uh, Marie's map or who, whatever map the city as mm -hmm. a village wants to use. Well, I, I, I don't especially, I'm not all that concerned about matching what, uh, matching the information because certainly, you know, we, we talked about it before. We don't especially mm -hmm. want uh, the um, uh, zoning information on it. What we want to do is be, consistent as far as uh, lot layouts uh, and make sure that um, you know the mat the district is uh, as per what was sent up to the state and is now part of the village ordinance okay I bet you it's online. I'm looking at some Putnam County GIS dot com right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I bet you it's all online yeah it's but all there Great. No, no, hang on. No. Uh, writing down what I need to find out. Okay. Um, all right. CLG grant options. I have no ideas. Um, I, I guess the question uh, on that uh, for, just to refresh everybody's memory, uh, CLG, uh, the reason we joined them to begin with was to generate, uh, to get some grants to do our, our uh, ordinance and serve and the design standards. And so mm -hmm. uh, the next round of CLG grants is open. Uh, and the question is, do we want to submit 
uh, grant application. Well, I said this in an email, but I think if it's not a huge hassle, um, you know, if we have time, if we want to make the time, um, I mean, we could use it for something um, towards, you know, just the printed copies of the new design standards, putting them in the library at the town hall, wherever we decide to put them, a uh, village hall rather. Um, that's the only thing I can really come up with because we've done so much work already, uh, you know, so much planning. Uh, we kind of have all of our bases covered, right? It's the only yeah. thing I can come up I with. I think it would just be publicizing, doing a mailer or something to publicize the update to the standards, but- Mailer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can even commit to when we are able to do that. So yeah, I, I, I would rather not, I would rather not ask for the money now and be positioned to maybe get a little bit more money in a year or two if we had more clearly defined priorities. Um, well, that, that and also in about a year or two, because typically uh, they, the grant is to reimburse you for something. And something so, you've already done. Yeah. yeah so at, at that point, we'll have actually some work done that they can reimburse us for. Yeah. Not All right. So we'll, we'll table that. Okay. Okay. Uh, discussion approved COAs on drive. I can just email you about that. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, I move to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll awesome. second. Oh, sorry. Oh. Lloyd, take it away. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So uh, after making the one that we had in the schedule, I missed the one that we did. Uh, any questions concerning from uh, the uh, design standards meeting last Sunday? No, I think the biggest thing is the, um, the thought I was, I was gonna suggest when do we wanna meet next, but. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's ask. The photos, and I think that's also the photos are um, a little hampered by the snow. If we wanna wait for snow to melt, or oh, maybe we don't, I don't know. I just feel like losing inertia. I, there's always something like, so what if there's snow? Um, do we wanna meet next Wednesday? strictly for the standards nothing else i can't next wednesday i can't either okay but do we want to meet um in two weeks for our workshop meeting do we want to start a half hour early just to review that stuff i mean we can see what's on the agenda for the workshop but i think that if we start the workshop with a focused mm -hmm. discussion of uh, design standards, next steps, then at least we know that it's going to be done. Yeah. I right now, I think the only thing we have are Joe Thompson's going to come back and um, we, there was a referral that went out to a um, nut fence that's out of compliance on Furnace Street. So we may have a short agenda that night. I, um, I, I know you asked me if I could run the the show on the 24th, Sean, I can't actually either make that date. It's a birthday in my domicile here. And okay. <laughs> given how bleak it is, I need to be around for that and make an exception that one Wednesday. Okay. Um, so if somebody else t could do it, Todd, maybe. Um, yeah, or maybe Michael can. I, I'm I'm planning to attend the meeting. I just don't want to be dependent on my internet connection out in Cape Cod. Okay. So, um, but even if Michael can just be the one that actually signs in for it, and that'll work. I, I do it for all the other boards. Great. Thank all you. right. So this is the next meeting on the twenty uh, fourth. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, the The question is, do we uh, do we want to have another meeting before then? I'm open. I'm open. I'm not, so you can just schedule it as you see fit. But I'm out of town for two weeks. Well, it, it, you know, it really becomes a question. All right, so we uh, right now what we have is that we're talking about perhaps a meeting earlier on the 24th to go over the design standard issue. Grabbing my calendar. 
But I, but I don't think we can commit to that because if Lloyd's not able to attend, he's the, he's the, the jockey of the standards. Right. So then do we want to do it on a Sunday morning? I can do that. I can't, I'm actually out of town the last week of February as well. Um, I, I mean, okay. I, Andrea, correct me if you think I'm wrong here. I feel like, uh, uh, I'd rather spend time with Hannah than another meeting. Uh, sorry, hold on one second. Just, just spend time coordinating, talking about what photos she should get, what she got, if she got Sorry, any. just establishing quiet and looking at my calendar. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, so Lloyd, so do you and Andrea want to follow up directly with Hannah and have a session with maybe just the three of you, if that's easier to coordinate, and then We'll take it from there rather than trying to get all six of us together. Yeah, sorry. I was just grabbing my calendar. Um, I saw so I missed a beat here. Um, what day are we talking about? We have we're, not, we're not talking about a day just yet. We're talking about instead of having a, a meeting of the board, a uh, meeting of you, Lloyd, and Anna, to specifically talk about uh, what still needs to be done. Okay. Well, we had that. It's basically, it's a check-in. Yeah. Right. I feel like she needs a little bit of um, guidance. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I mean, I, I like, like I said, I'm um, still learning the um, material myself, so um, that would be productive. I, you know, throw a date at me. Well, let's talk uh, about offline then. You well, and I can talk over email, Lloyd. Yeah, and and the other idea is that if you have to take some photographs for. Um, for the design standards, maybe that is one of you know some of the photographs that get sent up to Chris. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. so uh, Andrea and Lloyd will let you guys work out when you meet. The next time we meet is Two the twenty fourth, and Michael will be running the show. He'll be the thank you the ringmaster. Right. Okay, with that, uh, did we vote to adjourn already? Yeah, we're already adjourned. John and Lloyd okay. seconded. Very good. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right. Night, good night. night.